shorts there. This one's Where big. Jelly Siegel shorts. Jelly, hold that up for a sec. Diane, Diane T. Singer. Gregory Sikorsky. Stefan George Silver. David Silver. Greg A. Silverstein. Yeah. Nasima H. Simji. Bruce Edward Simmons. Diane M. Simmons. Donald D. Simmons. George W. Simmons. Arthur Simon. Kenneth L. Simon. And my grandfather, Wall Street gentleman, Emmer Carvey. All right, kids, let's do it. This is my first uh, two-on-one at the Kevin Clancy show. As far as you know. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my first threesome, man, how about it? Married couple at all. Yeah, it's not well, ours. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knew I wanted to do something this year for it being the 20th anniversary, and um, and I kind of was racking my brain about like, should I do like a charity thing or some sort of event? And then I thought of this and I thought, what better way to do it than to talk to like the two best uh, storytellers I think I know, who also I think have the most unfortunately heartbreaking, but also uh, captivating and endearing and loving story regarding 9-11. I mean, I, anybody who lives around here, I feel like has some connection to it, unfortunately, but I feel like the, the, the story that you both have with your father, Annie, is like, you know, it could be it could be its own story. It could be its own movie. It could be its own series, you know? Um, so I appreciate you doing it. And I, I was saying to large, I was like, you know, I feel like I'm going to need a box of tissues. And he was like, well, uh, she's a rock. She's not going to get emotional. I was like, I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about me. Because I feel like I any, one. especially any sort of, we got a tissue. I All right. Tissue. I, yeah, I, 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 I dibs on that one. Because <laughs> there we go. Because I feel like, especially nowadays for me, father daughter stuff, I'm like a puddle. I see a commercial and I'm laughing about it. So we can uh, cut to the chase too. After everybody had died and after they, they weren't finding all the bodies yet, but there was enough to know who was dead. Like they were all those like, um, like people were sending in, um, people got out and they were unconscious in a hospital in New Jersey and stuff. And it was all this stuff and then people were signing up who they found and people were signing fake names like Jim Morris and Elvis Presley. But mm -hmm. once we found out that they were dead, and this is an example of what you were just talking about, we got to memorialize. I think it was after we found your father's hip bone. We got something to like bury. Yeah. We found his hip bone and his jaw bone, part of his mandible. And that was enough for us. We didn't want to have this morbid uh, jigsaw puzzle. So we memorialized and we had a memorial in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Because New York, nobody on the floor of the New York and the American Stock Exchange died on 9-11, except for this small company, Harvey Young Yearman, Emma Carvey being Rick Harvey, which is her dad. So we go to do this memorial at St. Patrick's Cathedral. I spoke at St. Patrick's Cathedral because that's where I graduated. Mm -hmm. LaSalle Academy, uh, oldest uh, Catholic school in the Archdiocese had their graduation there every year. Right. So I, And even then, like I was just very, very nervous. So now the only person that's going to eulogize the seven men, nine, nine, nine. men is her, because it's a, it's a combo memorial. Right. So we go to this fucking, excuse me, we go to this thing and she's got to eulogize her dad, her uncle Bob and all the fellas and everybody from both floors show up. St. Patrick's Cathedral is packed to the rafters. When I say standing room only with all suits, and back then it was like the chrome suit, zipper head, Italian guys mm -hmm. and stuff, packed to the rafters, just pouring out because everybody from that tight knit community, she gets up there and says, I, I, can you come up with me? She gets up there and fucking pures it. I'm sure. Not a hiccup, nothing. Talking about it. I mean, this, and the wound was fresh. Mm -hmm. And when she got down a day later, they were like, we just don't know who's the Asian guy behind you because I was crying so much, I was swollen. So you may get something out of me and you may get something out of you. Yeah, I don't think I you're mean, gonna get anything out of this rock today. Like the way, <laughs> yeah. the way it sounds is like this, yeah. you know, this little lady and her father and the guys who, who raised her with the stock, the yeah, stock yeah. exchange, the trading floor connection. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a heartbreaking, but it's, it feels like a script. So. Yeah. I mean, your dad uh, seems to be um, a character that, you know, <laughs> raised yeah. a character, right? Um, 
what what kind of, what kind of guy was he? He was tough. He wasn't he wasn't easy. He um like so he started his two dollar brokerage operation back in the year I was born. So I kind of grew up with it. The, everybody that he hired was all family, and um, so when him and my mom split up and I went with him, you know there was no camp on on holiday. Like you, everybody would go to these fun camps, and I was down on the trading floor. Whether I was sitting there <laughs> writing tickets or you know picking up commission bills, it didn't matter. So um, right out of co- high school. I, I knew what I wanted to do. I was like, well, I'm going to go down and work on the trading floor. It's crazy. Like some of these kids were going to college for four years, and by the time they were coming out, I was already making a hundred grand. Like it didn't make sense. I was going to say people go to college to get a job on the trading yeah, floor. Yeah, it just didn't trade. make it's, sense to me. So yeah. I started down there full time when I was 17, but I had been working summers and, and holidays since you know 12. So it was just like a natural progression. But um, he worked on the Amex. He put me on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange because he, uh, yeah, we're very separate. similar. Yeah, yeah. like flash The American temper Stock Exchange and- was the smaller one. The New York Stock Exchange was the show. The American Stock Exchange had hand signals and uh, you had to wear a mask to work because you were robbing the public every day. And that's where Rick was. <laughs> Okay. And his partner, Joe. And his history. Like, everybody yeah. knew yeah. all his stories. He, was, he didn't his want floor. me. He, yeah. he didn't want me knowing. I mean, like, I got a tiny taste of trading floor life yeah. one summer right. on the NYMEX. And just, okay. you know, it's it's a boy's <laughs> club. It's uh, crazy, too. I yeah. mean, Nuts. The, 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 day I got, uh, the day I saw a guy get his spurs on the back of his feet, it was the <laughs> yeah. funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> right. I mean, everybody yeah. clowning him. And, you know, it, it, and, and for... A girl raging from the age of twelve. Even when you're an adult, oh, it's yeah. not I had a, my it's shoes a t- powdered. Yeah. yeah, my patent leathers powdered with my yeah. with my tights on yeah. when I was about seven or eight. Like it, it, <laughs> right, all the right. all the shenanigans were, you know, they were all used on me by the time I was ten. Right, <laughs> right. Was, right. So wait, what were you saying? I'm sorry about. But it's like so the, the the dichotomy between the American and the New York shouldn't be lost on people. The New York was the show. Yeah, and it's the only one that survived. Now, like the American Stock Exchange was swallowed up by it. So his her dad. Was had the opportunity to go to New York many a time because that's where one of his his partners were. There was one guy who was upstairs, young. Mm-hmm. Yerman was on the floor of the New York, and Harvey was on the floor of the Amex. H Y Y. And um, her dad graduated high school. He was one of the first graduating classes of Sheepshead Bay High School, yep. which is my neighborhood. Yeah, total coincidence. Right. Her dad grew up in my. Her mom and dad both grew up in my neighborhood. I could walk to their high school from where my mom and dad live. Right. Total coincidence. Right. He never went to college. He goes down to the floor of the American Stock Exchange, like she was saying, and on top of having a regular business, he used to do something called pork chopping wires, where he would just open up another phone turret. So if he was working for Newberger Berman at the time, Newberger Berman paid for the booth, paid for all the telephone wires, paid for everything for him, right down to lunches and stationery. And then he would go to another smaller company and be like, hey, do you want representative, uh, representatives on the floor of the American Stock Exchange? Here's a number. And he would open up another phone turret, New Burger <laughs> Burn would pay for it, and he pork chop wires. He was making more money on a weekly dice game than he was making for <laughs> New Burger Berman. On the weekends, one of the guys who ran New Burger Berman, Ray Strain, yeah. Rick and Ray, they had Swing and Sway with Rick and Ray. It was one of those trucks that used to pull up to City Island and you'd pay a dollar a piece and the kids would get on there and do like, so this was a hustler. This right, was a right. fucking hustler right. who, who, who came from Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. So he was new money when, when it, like he started to make it and stuff like yeah. that. But I can't tell you how, like, th- compared to like the corporate people that you see now, or who people may have in their head who uh, captain of industry was. Right. This wasn't him. This guy was was he was tough. He was an asshole, <laughs> and he was he was just very very creative, and he had huge balls, like Portnoyus balls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and, and anyway, and he was terrifying. He was five foot fucking seven. <laughs> Maybe he had mitts on him, Kev. I'm telling yeah. you, he played. He played handball in Brooklyn his whole life. He had mitts, fingers like he you liked know, to fight tiny too. sausages. So he, you know. Fighter, <laughs> sure, sure. I was terrified. Well, of so, him. but I'm interested, like in that. So that's your yeah. description. Of him. Do you have that same vision of him, or as his daughter, is it something totally different? I think as a kid, I did. When I was younger, I did because he was very strict. My parents were super strict. And what um, age did you go with him? Oh, I went with him when I was, uh, gosh, nine. Yeah. Was that time. like a choice for you or like was that my just mom, how like, it's going to well, go? Well, my parents started dating when they were very young mm-hmm. and they got married very young and he was like the only person in her life. So when they got divorced, she she never found anybody else. She still has him. Mm-hmm. Like she, I think she still has an altar to him somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I think it was very tough for her. Mm-hmm. So um, 
she suffered a nervous breakdown. It just and she just wasn't able to have. Right. You know, my sister stayed with her, but she was you know almost four years older, so she three years older, so she was um, she her friends were there. She didn't want to leave. Right. And my dad was like, "Yeah, well, you're coming with me." And okay. it was it was kind of like a somebody's gonna have to suffer. So it was either him or me. Mm-hmm. And you know, <laughs> like being him being the parent, I guess he yeah, it had yeah, to yeah. be him. But it was right. But then living with him, him, did it did did your relationship change with him? Was it like I became one like when he got remarried, I was his best man. Like it was very it's it cute. was very yeah. different because he wasn't gonna stop being him. Yeah. So he always loved to date. And even when he got married, that didn't change. So um I guess he would th- he would take me on dates with him, but he would leave me like a coat check. <laughs> so I had to do it was a lot really of that. Crazy. It was you know, <laughs> like they lived like, in the they lived in the World Trade Center for a little while in the hotel in the Trade Center, uh-huh. and and her father lived there. So like oh, wow. he'd go to work and like she'd be like a fourteen year old girl who'd go down. What was the name of the hotel? The, there? Well, when that that time it was the uh, it was the Vista, but on the first Vista. floor of the North Tower, like that was where all the airlines were. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember. I'm dating myself, but. Like you could go up and you would take that first little escalator up and it was like this red carpet and it was just all the airlines. It, like you had to go buy tickets. That's how you had, had to buy airplane yeah. tickets. And uh, like you had to go in person. So I knew, like I would know everybody from every country, you know, and if they had, it was cool because they had these traditions like every year, whatever, like if it was Germany, if it was a holiday in Germany, like they'd have like a little station set up. So I, I felt like Eloise in the plaza, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um that was interesting. Yeah, it's a unique. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she see breakfast in the Vista with Ed Koch. Oh, yeah, it, she was at like the, uh, fitness club, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's just a Every weird... Every morning. Type, it's a weird upbringing. Yeah, it was a yeah. weird, weird up... And, and when and, I say asshole, I mean that in the... Like, Fights is an asshole. Yeah. Right? You're an asshole. Yeah. Right. He was one of the most fun guys. Rick was one of the most fun guys. And my biggest regret is him not beating the kids. Because mm. my kids... Oh, yeah. Would've he would have spoiled they the They would have been skydiving by three. Especially my boys. <laughs> like, you know, it It really... It's, it's one of our biggest regrets. He yeah. was so much... Fun. He loved to have a good time and he loved to spend money. Mm-hmm. So like the family vacations and stuff, he 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 hated if I went to the pocket and paid a bill behind his back. Mm-hmm. So it was just it was it was awesome. He was a very good friend of mine. Like I would take his boat out to the Hamptons with him during the summer. Me and him would just go out there. Mm-hmm. Then we park. We'd have a house together. I never got that invite. Right. I had to stay a little home. Bit sexist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what's funny yeah. is like yeah. you know very in a way sexist. Very you know much so. you're his his daughter his yeah. son but not his son doesn't get yeah. treated yeah. the same way as the guys. No. Did did he want you to to come work on the trading floor? Like he tried to send you to college to, he to d- do he something tried. different? Or? Yeah, he definitely wanted me to go to college. He sent me to the first school he sent me to was an all girl school up in Boston and um, I am not a feminist like I'm, I'm I am definitely pro women I'll help everybody and I'll help anybody I'm you know across the board it doesn't matter to me I'll help anybody that was not a school for me and then he um, I woke up one day and he had his truck packed he had one of those Toyota Land Cruisers those mm-hmm. two-tone ones that you could run faster than <laughs> and um, he had it packed. He he had everything, uh, like an air mattress, bed in a bag, refrigerator, you name it. And I'm like, where are we going? He's like, well, I got you into a school called Mercer University. It's down in Macon, Georgia. I'm like, oh, great, <laughs> like road trip. Like we're school. going, yeah. <laughs> we're going on a road trip. I'm like, this is fantastic. So we drove 22 hours mm-hmm. down, and um, I was like, like you're serious? You're not serious? Like you're going to leave me here? And he's like, you got to, you got to learn. You got to do this. This is. I'm like, uh, this is stupid. I said, don't leave me here. Like this, don't drive away. Otherwise, you're just going to be driving alone. That's really all you're going to be doing. So he was like, no, th- you, you just stick it out. Just you get past the first six weeks, you'll love it here. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, I stayed a semester in Boston at an all, all girls feminist school. That didn't work out well. Yeah, why? So, why jo- you know, the thought of making George. He probably had a he probably had a, a girlfriend girl down, down there. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two birds. Yeah. yeah, he could stop off somewhere yeah. on the way home at a, at a golf course. So he drove away. I walked to the dean's office. I got his check back. The guy didn't even cash it. I'm like, like this was a mistake. I don't know what my dad was thinking. I sold the bed in the bag. I sold the fridge. I bought myself a first class ticket home. I beat him home. <laughs> And, and he <laughs> the, walked the in. look on his face when he gets home and you're there. I mean, he sent what me to my he... mom's. He was like, "You're gonna go live with your mother for doing." So I, I went and stayed <laughs> I, you, with my you mom. You gotta feel like you're seeing a ghost. You walk into she the room pissed. and you see the the girl you just dropped off in Georgia, <sighs> and she's back home. What? <laughs> he you're was quick pissed. working. I mean, pond and, and on you the know plane. What? I learned before... that side job from somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he it was it was it was it was so stupid. It was just it made no sense. And then he wouldn't talk to me for like two or three weeks. And then he called me up and he's like, I got you a job on the New York. You start tomorrow. 
I was like, perfect, this is great. So I went down and um, I loved it. Like I, I knew that was for me. And um, within like an hour of me being there, my first job, somebody died on the floor. So I was like, I walked over to the, New York, the Amex and I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> like I was just devastated because the guy dropped dead in front right of me. In front of you? Oh my God, and I was, like, what, was a heart attack or something? Like He had a heart attack, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh my, because they don't, shit. like, they're supposed to stop trading, but they didn't. <laughs> These guys you know? will literally trade over your dead body. They, yeah, like, it was very, like, they didn't declare him dead till he got off the floor. So, you know, he's like, oh, first day on the job, you can't handle it. Like, he was busting my ball. He was so, he was, you know. And then, like, terrible. In, you know, is, it, has it changed because he died and you look back on it differently? Like, or in the moment, no. were in the moment where you aware that he was, you know, an asshole, but it's a ball busting, loving type oh, yeah, of thing? Oh, yeah, I did it back you, to him. Oh, yeah, I did okay, it back yeah, to him. So like, you're, I gave yeah. it right back and, and he didn't, he didn't enjoy it. Like, I did, I, he didn't get in trouble for it. He could do it all, all he wanted. Yeah. I did it and, you know, I got my car taken yeah. away. <laughs> that's, that's the, the benefit of being the parent, right? Yeah. You, you yeah. hold the cards. And so you're working on the, not on the same floor as him, but you're in that world. Yep. And you are, where do you come into the I picture? come right out of college in 1993. With a hell of a head of hair. Yeah, oh, beautiful hair. Well, right? you, you had a, no, you had a buzz when I met you, because oh, I started what? down in 91, he came in 93. Back in. I mm -hmm. got those you options. Those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I went right down to 93, and um, I put off uh, law school for a semester. I deferred admission for a semester and then I never went back. We, I had a guy almost die across from me like three weeks into it from the home <laughs> shopping network when I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I told Kiss that story like an extra too. large. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, um, and I was like, I'm not going to law school. <laughs> Nothing like death was, yeah. you know, really brought people to it. So I started working for him. I've told stories about him on many of occasion. Real hard ass type guy to work for. But when he was um, open for a head clerk, he was a specialist, a market maker. And I jumped at the opportunity to do it. And then that's when we become very good friends because we traded uh, Viacom, Viacom B during the Blockbuster and Paramount takeover. So we were the busiest stock and on the floor. And nobody would work with my dad. Yeah. They all said no. Right. So huge arbitrage markets, huge. And, and, and you're, you're, are you thinking like, I'm, I'm just like down for this challenge. Like I'm going to yeah, take the you know, beating I was and younger. I'm going to persevere. Yeah, yeah, I was younger. Um, I think it's one of the reasons, honestly, I lost my hair. I mean, we would get there and we'd, Bell, bell rang at 9.30, we trade like crazy until four, never stop for a lunch break. Right. You'd be done with trading, you'd have that let that oily sweat on you, yeah. blood in your stool that night, like oh, all that kind of Jesus stuff Yeah, I'm sharing. See, I didn't was, have that. Like yeah. on the New York, we were not. much classier, and I didn't have More to stand civilized. next to the Tasmanian and, devil. He and, didn't. Yeah, and, yeah. But it was like this arbitrage market, and he was a master at it. He was a master at controlling crowds mm -hmm. and demanding respect. And that's why sometimes you could throw around words like asshole and stuff, because sometimes when people do that, you can you know pin that on them. Mm -hmm. He's a very good person. He's right. a wonderful person. He's a very charitable person, person, and one of the most generous people I've ever met in my life. So yeah, I'll put that out there. But you know, through this thing, like where you have your foot up and you twenty there and twenty there, mm -hmm. and then he'd press the principal button, and I know to take all those in, and then we'd be robbing people. Mm -hmm. You know, it was <laughs> it was um, it was the most exciting time of my life, mm -hmm. right? Just um, by far, it was the most exciting time of my life. And me and, and he and I went through it together. And then the, the business did change. So I know that Rick is dead now for twenty years, but he would not have done well with what happened no, with when it went no, from no. Um, it fractions and, to yeah. nickels mm -hmm. to pennies to mm -hmm. sub pennies mm -hmm. to dark pools and all that stuff. It wouldn't have done well for him or his business thing. But for back then, on the American Stock Exchange, which I know was a small microcosm, he was the he, shit. He, nobody better. And he knew very big guys. Like when we went to Mulhern's funeral, <clears throat> Guy that had oh, helped us him. out after 9-11, and we'll get to that. Do you know who that guy is? John, John Mulhern, Mulhern Shotgun John. Guy who, like, <laughs> runs Rumson, went to his funeral, mm -hmm. and we're sitting there. We got tickets to get into the funeral, and we, we sit down at the funeral. Obviously, I'm jumping ahead, and we're sitting down in the church. All of a sudden, Springsteen comes out, Holy and they shit. start playing during the thing. It was the only wow. time I've ever seen Springsteen live is when he performed at a funeral. <laughs> so Bon Jovi gets up, starts singing oh with him, and shit. Poor John, he was so confused. Yeah. He was like, I don't think I am. I don't think we should be singing at a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? Like, <laughs> Springsteen's like, you know, he's singing that right. Santa Claus is coming to town, and he's like, what's that, John? What did uh, you get, Harley? You got a, you got, you got a, um, 
a, um, uh, a big trust fund. Policy. You got a big insurance <laughs> yeah. policy for a couple million. <laughs> and John Bon Jovi was like, did he just say that at a funeral? <laughs> but, but we used to like, so Sumner <laughs> Redstone would call funny. every day to ask about his stocks. You know, like, and, and stuff. So cool you're, you were, you, you really felt like you were part of the process back then. Yeah. Everyone's so removed now. I used to speak to uh, McElhaney, who's the XCL guy who also owns Tabasco sauce. And, you know, when we went to our, our uh, honeymoon in Bermuda, uh, Viacom was having something. So I said, yeah. tell Sumner I'm here. I got bumped up to the presidential suite. Sure, yeah. This was a cool now it's time. all just computers yeah. and yeah. algorithms. If and he had a great day. How would Rick have handled crypto? You know? Oh, I mean, forget like, it. He would have found a way to rip everybody off. Yeah. <laughs> if they had a great day, they leave the floor, rent a uh -huh. chopper, go to an island, cut the, the, the pants off and just hang out on, like in shorts on islands and stuff like good that. Good old days, yeah. It yeah. really was a good yeah. old days. So we were right in the middle of that and I was doing well with him. We were doing well together and then all of a sudden I had met her. She came down how, from the- How did that happen? Nobody wanted to talk to her. Hell no. She was- no, you, You've gotta be right. like, oh, you know, you can't touch that. Oh like, shit, yeah. no, she was yeah. kryptonite. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but she, that was cute, though. She like, was gorgeous. I, 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 That's why he scripted it. She was like, gorgeous. Fuck, I can't even look. She was gorgeous. <laughs> and she's come down like sundresses and, and shit. And people used to be like, oh, and I was like, I who's mean, that? I also had a lot of relatives, it, though. Like, it was a lot yeah. of my cousins. It wasn't yeah. so much that I, like, it was people. To, it, my dad surrounded himself with family. Fuck, so it was hired all everybody, cousins. Yeah. Family, so friends it wasn't even family. like, I had like that Sloman shield around me, they used to call it. I'm sure. Because it was. Did you hate that? Were you like, I'm just trying no, to date? No, I loved it because I didn't want to date anybody. <laughs> no? I had no, Except I had no interest. Me. Well, so <laughs> she's this is all actually over very funny. Me. She walks down, just she sees the drooling. kid. She's fucking stunned. That's not even a joke. Seeing stars. Unbelievable. It's true. It's 100% true. Oh, so, I, thought, I mean, no, don't, don't make his big dying for a shot. bigger than it already no, is. Oh, no, dying for a I shot of torched, vitamin L. I got yeah. torched for it. Yeah. So I go, my dad used to make me come down like twice a week to have lunch with him. Uh -huh. So um, I came <clears> down and he's like, you know, he walks over, he's like, like in the middle of the train floor. He's like, Jesus Christ, could you be any more embarrassing? And I was like. What did I do? I'm like, what? He's like. Me. Ugh. He just had googly eyes. I looked at him, I'm like, I, it was, it, I was done. He's really? Like, but he was dating somebody. Uh, so I was like, um, yeah. he's like, he, he's, he's dating someone. He's dating. Um, this, look at this guy. Yeah, that, right? Yeah. It was and a pinnacle for I was, I was, I was making a lot of money. Um, hair was me. fucking thing. Girls all over. Money, hair, multiple yeah. women? <laughs> yeah. So then we started dating in private or uh, in no, secret. No, years later. That was in 93. We didn't start dating until 97. Yeah. Oh, wow. Started. So there's a long time before yeah. you. Yeah. dating, you know. Then we meet in like a uh, No, in I like liked her. I knew her as a, a kid because her... Grandfather and my uncle worked together. So yeah, I, she most, was a local. You know, yeah. Some of these Brooklyn towns and, and outer borough towns are like so incestuous. It really is. It really is. And she yeah. was like, she was beautiful. She was like fun. She was trendy. Mm -hmm. She, you know, and I was like, oh, I'm nothing. <laughs> I am not his type. And then um, I literally ran into Which him. Which is so funny because now I'm like, you guys are so each other's types. You know, I don't know back yeah. then, but now yeah. you're the perfect fucking couple. I beat him down. I really yeah. did. I absolutely <laughs> did. Because I was late. I was late to meet my dad. We were going home and I was running through the Trinity Church Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And like I jumped the last like five steps and he was at the bottom of steps and I jumped right on him. Like I went like, what right a, Like a rom-com meet cute. Yeah. yeah. You know? Right by where Alexander Hamilton is. Yeah. 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 And he's like, oh, about. if you're ever in Brooklyn, call. You know, so that weekend I was in Brooklyn, so I called and he was pissed. He was so like, I like who actually it. calls? Yeah, who yeah, actually awesome calls. for me, right? This is a great part. And I would never, <laughs> and I would then never she's, uh, you always leave him wanting more, right? So yeah. she's like, what not the me. Fuck? I and then like, so what? Some, and then when I said I was playing it cool that I had just broken up with a girl and I wanted to like, you know, not be uh, tied now. She's like, okay. Then I was thinking about going out on a date with this other who I happen to know. I was like, no, no. Then let's just lock it down. Isn't like, that she, funny how she that works? She threw the ultimatum at me. Yeah, I didn't throw an ultimatum. I really did. Right. I was like, all right, well. You know what? Yeah, I'm just right. gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm I'm done. Uh, like the, the yeah. amount of couples I know that are like that, where it's like, you know, maybe maybe another time in life. I just want to be single now, and then it's like, okay, well then I'm gonna be single too. Right. And it's like, well, no, no, wait, I didn't mean yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, four I mean years. sit on the sideline while I fuck around, and then we'll date. <laughs> but if you're gonna do that too, no, 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 no yeah. let's yeah. just wrap so it up. Get down. Yeah. I waited yeah, yeah. four yeah. years, and then when I had my shot, I took it, and he was like, no, like, and he was like not nice about it. He was like, no. And I, I was an asshole. He was an absolute prick. And I was like, Page out of Rick's I book. was mortified. Yeah. <laughs> but I was mortified. I'm like, oh my God. Like, right. like true rejection. Yeah. Like yeah. I was, I was hurt. And then how me. quickly did you change your mind? Two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Two weeks. Because he, he, so had you called. didn't even have a shot at, at he called at and I was sticking to your guns. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, I was surprised he called. He's like, well, um, you know, I figured we could take it. So I'm like, I totally hear you. I agree. No problem. And at this point, I'm like, you just told me that. 
to back off, like, yeah. no shot. I was like, no, I think and it's great. how old are you guys at this point? Oh, um, I don't know, 23? 23, yeah. 20, yeah. I was probably yeah. 24, I was 23. she's probably 22, 23. Right. I was like, I got yeah. a date Thursday, like, I'm going out with, I don't even remember his name, and, um. Don't say it. I'm don't trying to think of it. Don't terrible. you fucking I'm say his name. He's the reason we're together. And, um, <laughs> he's like, oh, I think that's great. And then he called me back like two hours later. He's like, listen, do me a How favor. How about you cancel that? Don't, don't, don't go out with him Thursday. Spend the rest of your life with me. I'm like, done. Spend I'll the rest see you tomorrow. Of your life with me. You didn't that's say what that. You did. Damn right I said. No Damn way. right I said it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like, how different were you dating? We were engaged dating, 10 months later. How, how different... Are you now dating? Then you're going to be in, you know, oh, 25 I mean, years. Yeah, 20, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it and wait, seems. You, you said engaged 10 months later. Engaged oh, in 10 months. So you really were not fucking around when you no. said that. You, and you, then when you I went a, to a vibe. Yeah, when I like, went to tell Rick, I was like, listen, I'm flying her to Paris this week. I'm going to ask her to marry me, and she has no idea. We've only been doing this for 10 months. And since his marriage didn't work out, and he was a little bit of a womanizer type guy and whatnot, he had asked <laughs> me, he's like, he's like, that's great, you know, how I feel about you and how I feel about it. Can you please have a long engagement in case this isn't the right thing? Then he called me 17 times in two hours. And that's a very you sure you good- wanna go away? You sure you wanna go away? You sure you wanna go away? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and, what? Yeah. And then- how, you know, how long did it take for you to tell him you were even dating? Did you try to keep that so a secret? My, I, you told no, me that. I went to go work for, so I, one of his, I became a $2 broker for Harvey Young and Yerman. And one of our biggest clients was JP Morgan. And J, like, you know, that's one of our wires. JP Morgan then asked me to come over and work for them on the New York Stock Exchange. So when I got a job to work for one of Rick's biggest customers, he knew that when I went to go work for them, I would be mailing him in business, mm -hmm. $2 business. Right. It's a good move to lose a employee when they're going to one of your bigger customers, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. Particularly when you love the guy. Rick Harvey was the most important person to me professionally, hands down. He did that a lot yeah. too. He liked to have people start with him right. and use him and as a stepping stone. And then yeah. a lot of people went to, and that's that's yeah. why we lost two guys at Alger, because they had both started right. with right. him at Harvey Young. Crazy. I told him that before that, and I know we're skipping that ahead. That you might get that yeah, yeah, that's we'll John get into and that, Mike. That's yeah. just a, but so I so when once I was once I was uh, all set to go to uh, J P Morgan, and then you know you had to give your time. Like I'll, I'll be leaving in a month, and then whatever. That's when we felt comfortable well, saying we, that we I went was, out to dinner locally. Yeah, <laughs> saying that I was uh, <laughs> banging the boss's that. daughter. I was, was gonna, gonna like say at that point, seat. you know, little birds yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We used to like meet in the in the graveyard. Yeah, in sure. the battery battery <laughs> parking garage. Yeah, no, get parking it, garage. guys. Yeah, why not? Get right? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then then you and know, but like, he was he was cool with it when when he found out. Or? He was he, he was yeah. he, like he's just protective of his daughters, and sure, I think he sure. knew his his shortcomings, and I don't think that he thought that I was in the same, you know. um Great as him, I mean, he like he knew my family and whatnot. I think he He's worried for him. He liked Mike so much, and uh, I think he knew that. Not that I was tough, like that. I'm, I'm tough to be. I just I, I didn't have many like I didn't date a lot. Like right, I was very. Right. I worked a ton. So he's a little worried about him than you. He, I think he was more worried. Because I'm him. thinking to myself, if 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 that's my daughter. And I know how the trading floor is. Mm -hmm. I know how these guys act. I know what the, right. the culture around girls are, you know, all this kind of shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, stay away. You know, it's like a yeah. coach of a football team. Like, you're not dating, you know, I know I know what goes on around here. Yeah. Not yeah. my daughter. But, but to he's survive more like in that environment not, as a woman. Yeah. He knew what kind of woman survived in an environment like that. I didn't take shit from anybody. I stood my own ground. I would go toe to toe with him. Yeah. So I think he felt so more like, like he. <laughs> go ahead, but I guess so. Yeah. If you really, you know, it's your funeral. <laughs> slap, a slap in the ass as she go by, by like a, by a broker or something like that. Like you talk about sexual harassment. Back then, Forget on it, the I floor, mean. the stuff that she went through, and she was just, she was tough. She just went through it, yeah. or it didn't mean as much for some reason. So I'm not making excuses for it, but there weren't very many people like her. Yeah. So when you know the New York Stock Exchange is around and was around for a very long time when she signed the book to become a broker, and she was the 81st, 80th. 80th woman to be a broker. Wow. Out of the thousands of dudes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she was the 80th woman yeah, to sign the ocean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's extraordinary. Right. So, Thank yeah, you. maybe he was protecting me from this tough bitch because he knew that I was a sensitive <laughs> guy with wonderful hair and, <laughs> well, he and, didn't and lose abdominal you. muscles. He didn't want to lose you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like, guess, what, you, know, you break up, what happens? Here? What, what yeah. happened, you, you know, know, is this bad for business? No, right. but he knew, right. he knew that I was crazy about him when I said, well, what's Large's real name? 
And yeah. He's like, oh. That's right. He gave yeah. my sister a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what is that? He's like, well, she said that you were into him. And I said, there's no way. Yeah. But the second you asked, you know, what's large is real, there name, it is. I We yeah. never tell that part of our story. And I realize we should tell it more because it makes me feel very good. Well, the it does, the really name? Makes, it yeah, really great. makes me feel very I mean, the, uh, very the, good. The, the giving yeah. of the dollar, you know, slaps it on the table, you yeah. win. Yeah. You bitch. Yeah, so we I go mean. through this now. And so, um, just to, to sort of get everybody up to speed. So Rick, and so the H, the Y, and the Y would meet every Tuesday. No, so it started back in what, how to have the, the, it started with Windows was, when my dad started in 67, mm -hmm. when he opened up, he worked for Newberger Berman, and when he started pork chopping wires, what he would do is all the people that he pork chopped the wires with and his employees, they'd all meet on the corner of um, church and um, Thames, like right in, mm -hmm. like, Right? It's, it's yeah, a Trinity. Yeah. Well, it's Trinity down there. Yeah. And um, he would meet there every Tuesday morning, and he'd say, this is how the week was going to go, because they were closed on Wednesdays. The stock market was either closed or half-day. Yeah, they, right. used to, they used to do questionable trades on Wednesdays, so it was only a four-day trading week. That's how old school this shit is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he, yeah. would, you know, he would get everything that they did Monday, and they would talk about Tuesday and how the rest of the week was going to go. So he met there religiously every Tuesday morning. And then when they built the Trade Center and they opened windows on the 107th floor, he moved that meeting up there. Up there. So they started doing that. What year did they open that? I don't know. Maybe but 84? He was one of the charter members of the Sky Blue Club. And for people who are New Yorkers now, and I see a lot of young people in here, and I know like Josh is the type of guy who likes to go to restaurants and stuff and, and whatnot, I got to tell you, even if the food wasn't the best, if you ate at Windows of the World, Every it day. was fucking... I mean, it's Awesome you're to just walk the, around. You're in outer space. You're floating in the you're sky. Moving. You know what I mean? Like when you're buying yeah. an apartment and you're looking for a view. view. Yeah, you look it's... around. It was Jersey looked beautiful. Uh, yeah. Staten Island looked <laughs> yeah. beautiful. And, and the food. I mean, it's so, windows yeah. of the world. It was mm -hmm. perfect. And he, was, he belonged to the Sky Blue Club, which was like their eating club and stuff. So but, there was some uh, uh, But that was just, uh, that was a social Thing. He not, did that I for mean, fun. It, it was bit, yeah, but yeah. It, it's, not yeah. Like, it's not like there was an office. It was just like, no. instead no. of meeting here, we're going to get we together. We had breakfast every morning, every Tuesday, we had breakfast there. Every Tuesday. So I mean, we had Tuesday breakfast, morning. lunch, and dinner there. Unfortunately, after a while, you're like, oh my God. But they had an awesome <laughs> breakfast. But every Tuesday, we had breakfast there, and I would get there very early. I would get there because I would drive him in and his brother and Teddy Kozlowski. I would drive them in, right. drop them all off. I'd park at the battery, and then I would get up to Windows probably around. I guess I get there at like seven. They opened at seven. We're getting close to 9-11 now. So I'm gonna tell you that I left, I left the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with JP Morgan to go down south to work for Robinson Steve, for Robbie Humphrey, right. Robbie Humphrey. Annie and I went, went down there, we were just married. And we went, down to the, we went down to Atlanta and I worked there for exactly a year. And when Annie was, when I went down there to work for Robbie Hump, she was working for Robbie Stevens at the time one of her dad's biggest customers. Robbie Stevens had a job for her down there. I went down there a month before her. Robbie Stevens closed their office in that interim. Right. She came down, she had no job. So she came down, she had no job. We're down, we're newlyweds in Atlanta. And it's okay to go down to the South and be a guy because you can get along. Southern women are a little bit more of a different Clicky, nut to crack. Yeah. And so she was not a captain I sweat. Of, I don't glisten. Yeah, <laughs> she was like. <laughs> yeah, like I, I really didn't. Yeah. I mean, especially like New York, <laughs> New York broad coming yeah. down South. It's not. And know, her skill set was transferable nowhere down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, she couldn't become a fucking barista mm -hmm. because. You know, she'd been trading on a floor her whole life. It was so you're institutionalized at that point. You're, yeah. you know, you're indoctrinated. It's yeah. not. And it was she, hard. Yeah. And she gave up her spot on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to come down, and it would have been perfect. If Robbie Stevens's satellite office went down, there, we might still be in Atlanta. We might right. still raise kids there and or whatnot. If, you know. Robinson Humphrey had given me a job. Because or Robbie Humphrey would have given me a job. My my old place. That would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> but she was, she was playing with her own shit by that time. Like. She used to drive home to vote. She used to drive yeah. home just like to New just Jersey. To get but out. Yeah, yeah, just to get out. So I'm back. Like, I'm going I, home. Yeah. I knew that if I was there another year, I wouldn't be married. So I basically I, drove him to work one day, and I'm like, "Listen, he's like, why are the dogs in the car? Yeah. Wait, why is all our shit in the car? I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm going home. Basically, I, moving. I got home. my job like, back. I'm shit. going home. It's like yeah. dropping off at college all over again. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I yeah. got to get out of here. And at that time, and what year is this? This was 2001. This was this okay, was so March we're really 2001. Right it. Yeah. So Robinson Humphrey was owned by Citigroup at the time. Citigroup spun them off to SunTrust, which is a huge Southern bank, and it was a perfect 
marriage for them. Mm -hmm. And before Citigroup had spun them, they only took a couple of people and offered them jobs back in New York, and I was one of them, by luck. Uh So I said, yes, I will come up and trade on the desk at Citigroup. So now we go back up to New York after a year in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. which was a mistake. We go back up to New York. She immediately goes back down to the floor. Starts working for Harvey Young Nierman again on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I go to work at Citigroup at 390 Greenwich Street, which is a quarter of a mile, less than a quarter of a mile north of the the Trade Center. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time I ever worked for my dad now. Like, I always worked for Prudential. You've been around, but never under him. This was the first time I was working underneath him. Right. And she was still on the New York Dome. He was still on the American. So here's the American Stock Exchange. Here's the New York Stock Exchange. Here's 390 Greenwich. Here's the two towers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're down there. And I'm back into it. Tuesday morning breakfasts are still a go at Windows of the World. Yeah, I still so have she's to do going that. to them. I still did that. I, got, mm-hmm. I was able to always I'm do that. I'm still going <laughs> to them because I love seeing the guys. Mm-hmm. I love seeing Uncle Bob. Her, her, her Uncle Bob Toomey was, uh, was the guy. So, he was the one. He was married to my dad's yeah. younger sister. Yeah. Okay. So I used to go to those a lot. And so, um, so uh, Uncle Bob would have been a, a, a lifeline if you were doing- um, The dozen. The dozen. Mm-hmm. He was just that guy. Yeah. He, knew he was fucking he was a professor everything. at Georgia he was Tech for a while. Yeah, yeah. he was University, awesome. University, one of the two for a yeah, while. Yeah, just, yeah, just a wonderful person. And uh, and also grew up in Brooklyn. It's <laughs> so insane. Always, I mean. Yeah, yeah, everyone, how everyone many from Brooklyn is good. fucking people live yeah. in Brooklyn, New yeah, York, exactly. you know? Yeah. Um, so, so Tuesday comes along, and this so is- So Monday, so the yeah, weekend Monday. before, he and I go to an Auburn Ole Miss game. We're down in, we're down in, back yeah. in Georgia, and we go, then we drive down to Auburn. And uh, we have a we have a time like we have a great time. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, Monday comes and I'm like, I'm like moving around. I'm like, what is wrong with my jaw? I broke a tooth that weekend. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god. Okay. So now I had missed an insurance meeting. I had to leave an insurance meeting early Thursday, which my dad was busting my balls about because you know, yeah. just because I left early. So now on Monday I call him around three thirty. I'm like, listen, I'm not going to make breakfast tomorrow. I got to go to the dentist tonight. I'm, I have to get a root canal or whatever. I'm like, so just so you know, because I always got there very early. Mm-hmm. To uh, or I always ordered for the table. And there were seven of us. That, well, there were eight of us. I made eight. So I said, I'm not going to be there. You're going to have to either call in an order now or have Tommy get there early, but I'm not going to mm-hmm. be there. So he was so like, okay, well, yeah, September you know, 10th. this is September 10th. And he was like, you know, that's great. That's great. Like, you know, like that was like. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, I don't work out very well. But, um. It, like my everything went great. So when I get home that night, I said to him, I'm like, I can actually drive you in the morning. I feel fine. Like I thought that was going to be a big deal. Yeah. Because I don't do I have like whatever the phobia is for the dentist. Yeah. I felt fine. I'm like, this is. He's like, well, you already told your dad no. Take the day. Like, He'll get even angry if you show up because you told him you weren't showing up. So don't upset the apple. Just you know how he is, which mm-hmm. is true. Because if I showed up anyway, oh, then oh, what'd your father call me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It saved, and it saved a life. Yeah. So I didn't drive him in. I took the train in, and that was that was a hell on its own. But um, when I got to the trading floor, I must have gotten off. I got off the end train and walked up Rector Street into the into the stock exchange. Because by the time I got, like I used the laser and washed my hands because it's just filthy on those things. My, I turned my sink on to wash my hands. My water was black, and I mean black, like it was just filthy. But nobody else's was. So I look at Trish Murphy next to me. She's one of the specialists. I'm like, oh, look, someone's trying to tell me something. I said, I guess my day is going to be pretty bad. Oh, fuck. I go upstairs, and uh, Tommy K from, from J.P. Morgan mm-hmm. is like, you know, do you see the fucking TV? So I said, no. I turn around, I'm looking at it. And then I just saw, like, as soon as I saw the needle, I was like, ugh, because I knew that was the, that was, you know, windows. The building, yeah. So I beelined it over to my booth. I called up to, up to, the win- up to windows, and the line was just busy. So I start putting up my broker, the two of them, because now I, because I walked in at 8.40, 8.50, so I had missed, like, I didn't hear anything impact, I, obviously my water went bad, but um, I kept calling up, so I'm putting up the beepers, and my clerk on the other side of, of the, of the um, New York, he was in the main room also, but just on the other side, he's like, you have Tommy up? I'm like, I do. I'm like, have you seen him? He's like, yeah, he's up in the luncheon club. I'm like, perfect. Whew. Because whenever I went, we always left at like 8.30 because I this was a clerk. Was a, this was a time where they could have left breakfast. Like mm-hmm. that's the point that she's making. Well, I was she's a clerk. The, yeah. I had to be on the floor by 8.45 always. He didn't mm-hmm. allow me to be late. So if I went, everybody had to leave at 8.30 that way because the elevators took forever. So they could have so gotten, gotten out. out. So Ugh. I'm like, 
whew, if Tommy's upstairs in the luncheon club, everything is right in the world. So no problem. So now, you know, time, like a five, five more minutes goes by, I start putting up Tommy and Sadie, and I'm putting them both up. Same clerk from the other side of the booth, Frankie calls over. He's like, you got Tommy up? I'm like, I do. I, have you seen him yet? He's like, I told you, they're in the, he's in the luncheon club. I'm like, so I, I'm like, oh, fuck this. I walk around, I go to the other side. I'm like, did you actually see him? Mm-hmm. Have you visually laid eyes on him? He's like, no, but he's up in the luncheon club. It's 8.55, of course he's up there. I'm like, fucking no, it's, it's Tuesday. Like, they're at breakfast. And like him and my other clerk, Patrick, just went, they went pale. They were like, oh. he's mm-hmm. like, I have not seen him. So I went upstairs to the luncheon club. Shoes, jacket are still there. So I'm like, oh. So as I'm coming down, I guess that's when. Make sure everyone knows. Like, So the luncheon club was this sexy ass place inside the New York Stock Exchange that had everybody. So you know, cause you would take off your suit jacket, put mm-hmm. on your floor jacket, take off your wingtips and put on like, you know, orthopedic sneakers. Mm-hmm. So if you went up there and you walked by somebody's essential locker, the guy who did it, then you know they weren't in yet today. Right. Oh, yeah, so she like went from right. saying like, you know, from thinking that maybe the guys had made it down to going by there and so that's their nothing. time card. Yeah. Knowing that they would never work in their suits and in their shoes. Right. right. So, and so that's a staggering, you know, thing well, to see right the away. Puzzle, the, the puzzle pieces yeah. are kind of coming so together. So I went yeah. back downstairs to my phone with it. I'm like, if you hear, if you speak to them, like immediately. So I took Tommy's beeper. I said, if you hear them, call me and like put me up immediately. So I go back to my booth and I called over to the Amex and um, I got Maureen, my dad's another specialist that worked next to him. And she said, we spoke to them. We spoke, we spoke to Mike Pascuma, one of the guys up there. And they were told just to wait, you know, just, just hang out until the smoke clears and then, you know, come down. So now everybody was like, okay, they're okay. But my dad didn't have a cell phone, so it wouldn't have been, we, I wouldn't have been able to speak to him anyway. But Tommy wasn't answering his, and that was weird. And um, At this point, are you guys understanding the magnitude of what's going I on I definitely now? did. I, I definitely I'm, did. I'm I a different perspective because I got into work. I was, I was a trader on the desk, so I got into work at 6.30, yeah. 7 o'clock. Yeah. So when the first plane hit... I was well aware that it was a plane that had gone in yeah. and, and all that stuff. So and I was I was dis, I was distinctly aware that something had happened in between, you know, like I said, in between yeah, her and yeah. I. And she was a little bit less um, aware. And yeah, because like you're you're talking first, about yeah, because the, the second one hasn't hit yet. Right. Like now she's talking. The second one hasn't hit yet. Right. Correct. But but even you know when when we all thought it was like an accident at first right. or something. What well, had been hit before? It was still right. It had been and, hit and we before. Had no, and yeah. we, you know we didn't. So you. But that's what I mean. At that point, you know, you, you. So other than like the water is fucked up, you're not like panicking just from the. Just from, forget about family and where everybody is, just, just from like the holy right. shit. I don't think anyone happening. thought that they were gonna fall. Right. So I, I didn't don't think anybody was dead. So we call, so we, right away I try to call um, two of the guys I was said earlier that worked for him or had gone up to Fred Alger. They were on the 92nd floor. And I, tr- I kept trying to get John on the phone. And like my tie lines were just down. So I thought that was weird. I was like, that's, that's bizarre. Like, it's not so. I'm like, all right. So all the all the power in the building is out. Okay, that makes sense. So These then are I'm direct just kinda, wires. Direct wires can never go, go down. Like, yeah, like both yeah, power outages, yeah. AT and T outages, right. or anything you're, like that. Getting yeah. person, getting people their reports, taking reports. Right, the stupid fucking term mm-hmm. was the most important thing because it cost millions of dollars if reports didn't get through. Right. So those wires were so like calling to be down depending, or compromised. Depending on to the a, fucking right, so I could call right. up Windows yeah. and get a busy signal, but I would never not get through mm-hmm. to Alder. Mm-hmm. So then all of a sudden, I'm like, you, like everyone starts looking around and you can hear like, we heard this like rumbling. It sounded like rumbling and like we couldn't figure out what it was because like you were shaking first. And then all of a sudden it was just unmistakable. It was an engine, like the, the second plane came in. Like I guess yeah. he missed the first try yeah. and he came down he came up broad street so we he came like right over our head and we heard like we heard it we felt it so when that ha- happened and everything just went black like all the power went out like like for like a couple of seconds then we knew we were like Fuck, like that's terrible like we, yeah, we at that point we knew is, like yeah, there it was unmistakable yeah and then as soon as that happened like i knew that like they didn't get out we're fucked. I'm not leaving. Like, autopilot. <laughs> so the Citigroup yeah. wires worked. So she was able to go to Citigroup's um, booth and then call me. Yeah, so they were, we were in able, my booth, actually. So I turned yeah. around. I, I, I tie-lined him. And I'm like... Yeah. So we were able to talk we're throughout screwed. this whole thing. And mm-hmm. so now we're, we're trying to figure out, 
Mm, so they had they had evacuated my building, mm -hmm. so, uh, 390 Greenwich, and the last two people that they had to pull out of the place was me and the guy who ran my desk. And the guy who ran my, like I was trying to figure out, you know, widows and orphans Staying type shit. Phones, yeah. And he was calling every customer. As soon as the market opens up, we'll be making aggressive two-way markets. As well, as that's market what Dick Grasso up, was we'll saying. And thank markets. God he did, because he's like, yeah. listen, he's like, do not go outside. You go outside, you will not come back inside. Right. We're shutting down the building because we are opening at 930. Like he was adamant. Mm. And he's like, and I was like, well, I'm not leaving because if my dad is like trying to, evacuate somewhere and the bell rings at 9 30 and i'm not taking orders i'm dead like that wasn't and an option you're still like thinking oh, he that way yeah. yeah there's no way like from our understand like point. the scope of what's about to happen and yeah. yet if i couldn't if i lost him money if i was the only one there that could trade that and, and i didn't like go out and execute an order for him and yeah. he would lose money oh he would he would have destroyed me yeah. yeah we had no idea like so there was a gaping hole in both towers but we didn't realize like None of the emergency uh, staircases. And I never went out the and middle, looked. You know, and I did. And then we had, we had set up uh, tentative plans that if, if this shit hit the fan, you know, so here's me, here's her again. Downtown Athletic Club was a place that was even south of her, so a little further mm -hmm. away from the, and that was another place where we belonged. Um, her, we uh, all memberships at Downtown Athletic Club mm -hmm. from her father. So I said, we'll go there and it'll be the meeting place. So then when I had left... City group to come down and walk to her. I walked to the West Side Highway and then I had walked down when the first tower had fallen. So the first tower had fallen on me for all intents and purposes. The wind was blowing towards the west, which mm -hmm. was the greatest thing in the world. So I just got covered with dust, but I didn't get covered with rubble. Right. But our I cell phones didn't work. Yeah. So now, mm -hmm. essentially, the building, my dad and the other eight guys that I've grown up with for the last 27 years mm -hmm. were just were in a building that collapsed on top of. My husband, like I'm, like I was. Thinking, I mean, every, I'm everybody, like, that's it. everything. When she hung up the phone with me, she thought that I was walking towards her, closer to the uh, thing, and that her dad and all these people were at the top of the thing, and that's the thing that fell, right? So, so she was, she was majorly fucked. Yeah. So I couldn't get any further south to go get her. So I was then pushed back north. Mm -hmm. So then she's still south of the. Uh, of the tower and but he now called I'm his back mom. North his, he was time. able to get through to his mother with his with cell, my phone. cell phone. So then her landline, she called me and she's like, I just spoke to Michael. He's he's fine. So I was like So like cell phone and cell phone's not working, but landline working. and cell phone does because work. Because the tower was our was our, the was needle the, on the, the on service. our tower was yeah, our service. Yeah. So once that was gone, mm -hmm. there was there was no way. I'm gonna stop you right now because when I got pushed back north, I had to stand I had to go on one of those like piers, you know, whatever club iguanas or something like that to make a phone call. Do you remember how beautiful it was that day? It's like picturesque. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't, yeah. and there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Yeah. It was Perfect. just all yeah. blue. So I think people who will be watching this, who were in New York that day, I think you'd all like if you just take a second. I think everybody remembers that. Yeah. That was a honey of a day. Yeah, 9 11 I mean, it's right gorgeous. this time of year. Yeah. It's still warm, yeah, but like, the fall is coming. Yeah, so weather's turning. I'm, sun in the sky. I'm looking out onto the um, uh, the Hudson River, right, and I'm looking out, and it's gorgeous. And I'm speaking to my, you know, like you lose yourself for a sec. I was like, wow, this is gorgeous out. And then I turn, turn around, around and, it's and the whole fucking thing is eradicated. It's yeah. falling apart. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a, and, I, and that's another thing for people who are younger or for people who weren't in New York City at the time. I'm not a hero. Like, you know, I can't do a chin up. I, I, I wouldn't be very well in a wartime situation. It, you know, people tend to use the word <clears throat> hero or stuff like, or crazy, or, you know, what a, a nutty time. That was a crazy, crazy Just situation nuts, yeah. to be in. If you were a guy who took the subway like we did from Brooklyn to Manhattan every day in my life when I was in high school and you saw two towers that were no longer there and instead there was a giant crater and this giant fucking mushroom crowd going it, Kev, it was the closest thing that I could think to be in, in war. And I don't yeah, want to say I, that from a bravery standpoint. No, but from, it was fucking you know, terrifying. We had like such a good run, really, otherwise. <laughs> Man, minus, you know, early 90s, a yeah. little bit of military action. But yeah. it's not like it was a generation that was torn by war and conflict. No, not and, at all. You know, everybody was living pretty fucking, you know, yeah. pretty, dot com burst and, you know, yeah. explosion of technology and money and things were good. It was Holy shit, it they was, hit the Pentagon. Holy shit. Like, it didn't mm -hmm. stop. Yeah. It was day, man. Like, you yeah. didn't feel safe. Like, I got yeah, in my car yeah. and I was like, I'll oh, try yeah. to get across somewhere. Like, I got my car. I think I had the Buick, the Electra. 
I had the 72 Electra. They had fucking, that or the wagon, one of the two. Yeah, it was fucking huge. Yeah. And I couldn't get out of Manhattan, so then I had to park in what would then be ground zero once yeah. the dust settled after the second tower fell. I got we in got there it like, back the next day. Half the car was like dust like, and half. Was, yeah, and then the other half was blocked by the building, which was pristine. So it was like perfect. It was oh weird. God, I had to get walked crazy. in with people with hazmat suits to go get my fucking car, and I had to like shovel. It was like snowfall. Are you what, was this? About, what day was this? The, this was the next day, the yeah. 12th. Like, he went like, in literally the next day. day. His later, dad got called in. Back in. Yeah. His yeah. dad had just retired after being an iron worker for 40 years, and um, they needed someone to work cranes, and they had no crane workers because nobody wanted to come into Grand Zero. My father in law is like, the Fuck macho it. guy you'll ever meet. Yeah. And he's like, all of a sudden he's pulling on his he's, overalls. Yeah. He's got his harness on. Work. My yeah. mother in law's like, two where are you going? Two knees, two he's restructured like, hips. He's like, they're work. calling us in. I'm going. He didn't, it he skipped didn't a generation, blink. man, because I was ass and elbows <laughs> out of there. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I, I'm, I, was in, I was a junior in high school, I believe, and I remember my, my history teacher was talking to another teacher, not to any kids, but I was passing him in the hallway. You know that body language, and, right? And, and, well, he, and he was the one who said, a second one just hit, it's an attack. And I think that was the yeah. only reason why I knew. I don't even know what other kids knew. And I remember my best friend, his father, was a firefighter like, you know, at Battery Park, like right downtown. Oh. Right. So he was like, my dad's there, like he's going up, like that's his that's his area, like he's, you know, probably up in the towers right now. Like pumped and happy and, not happy, right. but, you know, proud. Yeah. And, he didn't you know, come back. all Tell of, me oh, he yeah. didn't. No, I mean, you know, no, no chance. He was probably one of the first guys running up. You know, was... So he was probably, you know, on the 80th floor yeah. when it came down. So he was like right on the scene. And, and it's such a weird thing when we all know it, and we knew it, but we didn't know. There's no confirmation right. yet, but we're like, oh, fuck. I was unaware of all that. Like, as close as I was, I was a block up south. I, didn't, I never went out. Like, I never left. My, I never left my post. Like, I didn't, I could have went to my window and looked. I could have went out yeah. front and just kind of looked so you up. Just, did, I you never did you were really aware of how, like, cataclysmic it was? I did, because I saw the, um, I saw the Reuters is, I knew everything and I could hear it all. I mean, I heard this, you know, I heard everything, everything that was happening. You could, it was, because the subways are underneath us. So the, like, people's shoes were starting to stick to the floor. Yeah. And, um, like, people were coming in off the street. And, and that's nothing. Like, the amount of people that, you wouldn't have expected to jump in, like to just all of a sudden autopilot into EMTs and stuff was, cause that's, I like think something- Like health mode, like to, to yeah, get in the, yeah. Definitely, and I think people, it's lost on people. They right away think Wall Street, they think white collar. The New York and the American are not like that. No, They're very blue collar. Like right. everybody has a second and third job. My dad yeah. pushed Kitty Rice. Yeah. You know, Dino used to sing in a band with this guy, and every you know, yeah, he, right? fucking hair, yeah. He, like everybody. Yeah, I feel had like all those guys were, you know, a uh, second from being a plumbers. cop or a firefighter. Yes. Yes. happened to go this <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah, you yes. know, went yeah. the finance route instead, and, and yeah, and there was no quotas or anything like that. It was just guys who can get the job done. That's it. Right. Down there. As long as you can make money. So they matter. were making yeah. makeshift like infirmary stations at on the corner of every booth. Like they were all like they just jumped in like garbage pails were taken out, like the plastic was taken out, ice yeah. was dumped in, you know, and people that had been in I guess Vietnam and stuff and like because the, there were a couple of older guys that were there and there, there were some guys who had been in Korea like they were like they were a lot of old timers there they jumped right in and it was just like taking people off the street like all of a sudden because we had these badges that you had to like um, swipe over the turnstiles to get in yeah. they unlocked all of them the fire the yeah, warden he's yeah. like everybody open they just took yeah. everybody from the, the street shelter, yeah. so I saw people with like you know metal in their head dust. Black, like it didn't, it didn't matter. We had everybody everywhere. So it was like, then all of a sudden when the North Tower fell, that's when they shut everything down. And they were like, everybody's in. For as much as I hate New York, and I think you're there with me, uh, Kevin, I think you're there with me, not to uh, as much of a degree, you don't hate it. You wanna no. retire in New York City. <clears throat> if it happened somewhere else, it wouldn't have been as smooth. It wasn't smooth. But just even the way people had right. conducted themselves, yeah, there is a toughness. Yeah, you kind of went into go mode and like. It, yeah, yeah, like I, I really think it was, I think it was handled better in New York. That's, that's it's a one of those things when like you know it's like New York is different. You talk about it in sports, you talk about it in nightlife, you talk about it in in movie, you know all that shit. But there's it, it's for a reason. You I know? think so. Like, there is something behind yes. it. And nobody is... got it true within at the end of Ghostbusters with the State Puff Marshmallow and person. They were all singing. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it yeah. really, inside the Statue of Liberty. That's what it was like. Like everybody really, like but joined as, forces. As that's all happening, and as 
pulling people off the street to give them some shelter and are you oh are you understanding that you know you've uh, you've lost everybody 100% you're not hoping I, that I knew like it immediately. they're going to get we're going to find them mm-hmm. or they got out you're just like no i knew immediately you know, are because are you helping and shit or are you just sitting there like blank like staring well, at the so wall well so what like, i did I lost was my father and i'll show you what i did well, for me and, it was like um the first thing that i had done pull it over here. It's, pull it's in here so f- as soon as this happened i knew like um what i was going to have to do I'm sorry, I have to be. This is the 911 box. This is my 911 box. I got more crap in this 911 box. But um, so I knew because if if anything, my dad would have called me right away, mm-hmm. and he would have been like, you know, where is it? This is Sutty. That's Bobby Sutcliffe. His wife was pregnant with twins at 911. Yeah, oh, that was well. Geez. That's that's why I jumped into this mode. Did I not bring my notebook? Because I wanted to show you that. Yeah, here it is. So everybody has. So it was a, it was a great. So when I left, really when I left, I found a Bible, right? And I probably should have figured out, tried to figure out, but there was no way to figure you out. You found it where? At, at, Just on the street. Like someone oh took off gosh. and left their Bible, like you know. So I felt guilty leaving it there. But for me, this was mine. So when when I, so as soon as it happened, this is the first thing I did. So, like, because this was what I took, used to take quotes on. This was the first thing I did. This is what this is what I did during. Like the first two hours, I got yeah. everybody's phone numbers. Oh, wow. I got everybody's because we didn't have cell phones. Cell phones, yeah. yeah. So I call. I got everybody's like um, social security number. I pulled everything. So this is what I was doing while the towers were burning because uh, I was afraid that. So I like. I knew my dad wasn't out because if he had an opportunity to call me, he would have. He would have been like, and I know he would have told me to get out. That would have been the first thing he would have done because mm-hmm. I think his, uh, you know, his priorities were always me and my okay. sister. So I didn't. Times year. Like 10 I just five first collapse one oh three like I was trying one. to keep t- like tabs of everything because if I didn't, you know I was having mm-hmm. wives call me like I was having you know all the widows well at that point I didn't know that, like I didn't refer to them as the widows then but like I would having I was having all yeah, their wives sure, calling absolutely. me like you know are these crossed off like people you got in contact with no people, they, I just made sure when I, I crossed them off when I had their in, like when I called them yeah then I knew right, that was okay. a good number that's when I got I just it, put a line it, through yeah. so I knew it was a good number right um so like uh. Because they would call me, and like three, two of the wives were pregnant. One was pregnant with twins. Like the other one was due in December. Mm-hmm. So when they would call, and they were like, you know, have you heard from them? I was, I didn't want to say, you know, well, no, no I, I didn't yeah. want to say anything. Right. And at the same time, everybody on the trading floor kind of left. So I was answering like all the other Thailand. So I was trying to keep like my my my, my shit together. Right. Because at I that, mean, you have every hospital here. Every, Columbus, I had everything. St. Vincent, St. Barnabas, Christ Hospital, Bayonne, Thousands City, of people got Palisades. out. Thousands of people got out. You know, dozens of people were rescued from rubbish, mm-hmm. uh, from rubble and stuff like that. So we did have in the back of our heads that maybe they were in a staircase. Some, and my dad would have helped. Maybe, he would have yeah, never there was, yeah. there was, you know, there wasn't much in, in between. Like I, I remember people. There was uh, no in between. Right, like people were donating yeah. blood and they were setting up like triage for like, you know, come, you know, if you, if you get out, come, we have beds and tents yeah. and, right. and there's just nobody. There was, you know, like because the it was either, were waiting. you were either like needed to fully be rescued out of rubble mm-hmm. or you were gone, but there was no like, I got that, out and I just need a little bit of help. It right. was no, you know, one or the other. And I remember that being the most depressing thing of people like, I'm donating like t- my time to the Red Cross, I'm donating yeah. my blood, I'm, I'm, I'm a volunteer this, I'm a volunteer that, and it's like, Wonderful, but you're not needed because there's just they had all those people to... on staff in Lennox Hospital, and like, and nobody yeah. came in. Like, they were just waiting. So I try. So I was trying to like make lists of every hospital they would go to, everybody they would call, you know, who I would have to meet with where. I mean, um, Dick Grasso came down to my like he came down and he was like, "What Dick do Grasso you need?" Was the chairman of New York Stock. He was Chief. the cha- yeah. He was the chairman at the time. He came down and he was like, "What do you need?" Because I wasn't leaving, and I think. Um, who was it? The guy, uh, Bobby, Bob Stevens. He had stayed. He was he was my old boss. I'm Robbie Stevens. He had yeah. gone over to Dick Rosso and he's like, listen, like the entire company of Harvey Young that was up there is, you know, uh-huh. but like we 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 were um, we had a presence on both floors and my dad was an official. He was one of the governors on the on the Amex, but those seven guys that were at breakfast made us lose a quarter of more than a quarter of our workforce. So, like the government right away has to kick in. Yeah. So it was just like it was just like. A, so, so it was Rick like, Harvey, 
who was the uh, head of the he company, Emmer Carvey, who was her dad. There was Bob Toomey, who was her uncle, who yeah, was a Robert broker Toomey, on yeah. the floor of the American Stock Exchange. 14th Street in there Brooklyn. was L. Patrick Dickinson, who was a broker on the floor of the American Stock Exchange. So those are the three guys that I started in the business with. And Pascoma. I'm looking at all, and then Michael Pascoma Jr. Emmerich, Robert, Michael Lawrence, Pascoma Jr. Tommy Sullivan, Robert Sullivan. Tommy and Patrick were brother-in-laws. Rudy yeah. Backus, Mike Yeah, Pascoma. so L. Patrick Dickinson's brother-in-law was Tommy Sullivan, who was on the floor of the yeah, New York. Yeah, Tommy married his sister. Bobby Sutcliffe was the guy who was also You're a broker on the floor. You're getting in order here. Right? Yeah, it's, I mean, un order wrote it's it is. unbelievable how everybody he was, was at everyone's, that's everyone's birthday parties that's, and that's shit like that. She was pregnant right. with twins. Like, yeah, it was yeah. just... And it, it, uh, uh, Rudy Backus was the only guy who was on the outside looking in. He did work for them, you know. And he was great. And he, then, was, he was a lot of fun, and yeah. And then Mike and, Pescuma and, and Jr. and John Schroeder were the two gentlemen. And Mike so Tucci. John was my, excuse me, Mike Tamuccio. And then John Schroeder was the guy that I started with. He was the same age as me, graduate from Princeton, national champion in lacrosse. So yeah. we used to work mm -hmm. shoulder to shoulder for a long time. Everybody. So all these guys for this small company, was just extremely unlucky. Yeah. When Merrill Lynch, like Cantor Fitzgerald, right, isn't, say, Cantor is not knows on Cantor the Fitzgerald. floor. I know Cantor Fitzgerald. The They're an upstairs Cantor operation. They don't, they don't, people don't know. They're an upstairs operation. They're right. a trading desk. Right. They're not a brokerage on the floor, like right. a $2 brokerage. So this was a small, intimate Little family. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And all, very much but so. But if you look at like Merrill Lynch, uh, on the floor, Merrill Lynch, Bear Stearns, J.P. Morgan, any of the big boys at the time, they lost nobody. Right. They lost nobody. We lost everybody. everybody. Citigroup. Yeah. We lost nobody. Right. They lost everybody, everybody on this little fucking thing. And that was, and that's again because of they they wanted to do this. Winners they, of the world. They do this breakfast. My dad did. Like it's, it. You know, again, that's you know. Cambridge and then John and Michael like, happened to be They go stern. to work. They right. were there. Yeah. They were always well, going to be hard. there. That was one of the hardest things I think for the wives. Right. It's like because if, if they got if they pick. Any other place in the fucking world. If I had world. gone, they would have left fifteen time, minutes early. Right. You know, if like they, that was if a survivor guilt thing too with her. Like if, he, if he just kept it at Trinity Church or wherever it was, or right on the. Uh, they renamed the, uh, that street for him. I mean, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. My, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. I my um, my aunt had. She was like, you know, they're naming streets for people who have you know had died on 9/11 and and were instrumental in their community. She's like, we should do something for your dad. I. I I just didn't have the time. I, I just really yeah. didn't have the time. And she's like, I'm going to do it. So she went down. She petitioned. She's like, we need sec, uh, you know, X amount of num names, signatures. And that was a layup to get because I just kind of just put it on my booth and just everybody signed it. And um, they renamed the corner of Thames and Trinity in front of Trinity Church, Emma Carvey Place. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, so Thames Street is now Emma Carvey, Carvey Place. Place. Uh, which is, and the that's the corner the, of the American Stock Exchange. But yeah. that, that feeling of like, you know, I, there's something to be like if you were a pilot of one of the planes, like that's yep. what he does, yep. and he right. happened to get you know draw the wrong short in the stick, but he's a pilot. Right. Kenneth Fitzgerald, that's the floor we worked on. Right. If you're a firefighter down there, like that's what happened. But this fucking mm -hmm. breakfast was the reason yep. why. And that was a very, and as much very of it, it was an institution for, for you guys, like yeah. every Tuesday. So mm -hmm. it's not like it was a total whim that day. Yep. Tuesdays, you know they were there, but yeah, I mean, if you're a wife, if you're a child, they, if you're a family were, member, um, it's like this goddamn yes, breakfast. Yes, it was very because hard. it was so good or whatever, as you said. Great, like, great, great Tuesday great breakfast. Thing. You gotta yes. go, and that's no why better way to start your day than up there, there in that view. Like it really was invigorating, and and that's why I used to go for the free breakfasts. And I'm not saying that I got out, but she should have been there, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that, and I say that very, very carefully because. Thank God she wasn't. Mm -hmm. But that caused a tremendous amount of survival guilt. Like crazy. we do this better help and stuff. Like we do all these things for mm -hmm. it. Like the the amount of survivor's guilt that she dealt with, medicated for a while and, yeah, I mean, and stuff even like that. Twenty years ago, mental health is not right. It's well, not that long ago, to, but it's also there was as, there's still a stigma now. Back then, you know, forget it. Yeah. You're, you know, thank you God, know God I had to somewhere turn. to go every day. Because if how. I didn't, like I, like you can't help but like a cut, like one or two were. Very angry, as rightfully so. Like right. I, you know, rightfully so. They had every right to be angry that, you know, why did your father have to pick that fucking place? Mm -hmm. it, I know the anger wasn't directed at me, of course, but no. I'm the only one that was standing there to hear it. You know, I'm the only one that didn't go. You got you why? You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So How about there this? Were a There's a fucking company to be run. So now everybody in this company is gone, but there's still lower level employees who still needed to fucking eat. And the exchange is about it. to open up and stuff. So the only person, so the guy who I told you was not leaving Citigroup, I'll be making, he allowed me, gave me two months off. 
to help her out because he knew I was intimate with the workings of it. Yeah. And otherwise, the person who ran the operation while her dad's body still hasn't been found was this one. Her, yeah. Yeah. So I had said to you, like when we looked into this box, Annie would never was never a broker. I was never a broker up until that. Uh, I was never a broker. And he was never a broker up until the time. I told you guys, just because I think the box is interesting, if you look at shit like um, 663, right? So 663, I would said this before we had started, was your number. So anytime you were doing a trade, you didn't even say Kevin Clancy, you, you would number, say I'm 226. Yeah. Right. You would never say I'm Nick, I'm 111. And, and I never knew your name. I just knew 226 and 111. I didn't have to know your name unless we were friendly. So this was Rick's number, 663. I knew it by heart because he was all over me. And that was on the American Stock Exchange. When Annie went to pick up the pieces, she was working on the New York Stock Exchange. She'd taken the test and she'd come out on a badge as a broker. I told you she's the 80th woman to be there. Mm -hmm. She got some random Richie number. Richie you know, And some guy who was on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for a long time, Richie Ferrara. Mm -hmm. And again, that's his identity he'd found out that uh so he gave up his number for her it's fucking not it's fucking lovely so, yeah, yeah so he switched to 614 after being that as a identity i never got to really thank the guy by the way but you know so little stuff like that started to happen and um like when you get put on your badge mm -hmm. they grab it and they break it everyone snaps it like mm -hmm. that's one of the yeah, things yeah, that yeah. they do one and shit like that right? so yeah. it's all so then so that's my that's my father-in-law's badge and then that's Annie's. That's cute. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, so, it's a brotherhood or a sisterhood, you know. Yeah. It's a family. Yeah. It's, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a club. Very it's a brother, so. uh, you know, a partner group. It's, it's everything. But now it's widows and orphans, and yeah. we have to keep this thing afloat. So we went right I away for... I not... So for me, it was more... I had... Everybody could have gotten a job, right? Like, there were, we had 24 employees left over, and uh, 25, including myself, like, who's not going to give any of them a job, yeah, right? Like, right, of course. Right yeah. down to the input operators, the to the clerks, to the QT clerks, to the other, you know, well, there are no more brokers left, but anybody. All the brokers are dead. All you had to say was, I worked for Harvey Young. I need a job. Done. Yeah, you got a job. Right. Now come work yeah. for me. Like, we were right. getting, even I got a but couple. But this is, like, right away you're worried about this? Or, like, you know, what, I had what's, no what's choice. happening? I had, like, I had seven, September 12th. I had seven well, widows. Well, six, yeah. well, I had six widows because Rudy didn't work with us, and the two worked at Alger. But, um. But so I, you I know, had, if it's I me, no I'm choice. like, I'm what are you gonna fucking, do? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm not. We're, I'm not trading. I'm yes, not, you are. Yeah. You, you were, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe when you're you in were. that life, you were. But like, yeah. you do for totally me, would. in my in my experience in life, I would any other job. Like, let's say you weren't a trader. Let's say it was something else. Do you think you would have had the same well, like I ferocity have been able to, step to be into like, the role? No, but yeah. I was there. It was just me, yeah. and I knew I had these employees, and I had these widows. One was my aunt. One was you know my step monster. I had no choice. Like at that point, yeah. I'm thinking, shit. Two of them are pregnant. They need, they right. need like medical. Like well, I mean, I, but I mean, I know you say like yeah, you would, but I don't know. I think that's a testament to like the way you guys operate because I think there's a lot of people out there who wouldn't just pick up the baton and run. Who would be like. I don't fucking care. I just lost my my dad, and everybody was important to me. Like, yeah. no, but maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe, I, and maybe because I survived it, I felt guilty. Like I felt like yeah, I owed it to them. A good I want to stay busy. I want to. Yeah. Thank God I had a job right. to go he to. He would have wanted yeah. the shit oh, out of us. Forget it. He would have tortured. There me. always is that sucked. thought of like he would have wanted it the this afterlife, way. He would have absolutely oh, came in and. I'm looking at these notes here though. Like, you know, this says. All six stairs are in the core of the building. Oh, so this one here. Like, let me flip, flip around. Yeah, is that yeah. the one? So, so he's he's bragging about me. So, um, nine eleven is a is is a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday he goes in and gets his car. Thursday is is uh, now I'm now I'm hell bent on finding them. Right, like I'm I put together. Oh, we yeah. had gotten married like a year and a half earlier, and um, I, I my photographer was awful, so I didn't go get my pictures until. The, like two weeks prior to 9-11. Mm -hmm. So it's like a year and a half later, I go get my wedding photos. This happens, I ransack my my wedding pictures, right? I go through every wedding picture I have, and I grab Fine. Sonny people, and his yeah. wife at, at my wedding. I grab Patrick and his wife at my wedding. Everybody's from my wedding. All the Everybody pictures. Everybody who died was at our wedding. Every, every, and it was the most recent picture you could have gotten. And they're all from dressed them. to the nines, yeah. and it's so, so now Thursday comes, I go, I go on Fox News because they were like every news station was standing up and you kind of just like went through the car wash. And every picture I'm holding up, like, this is this guy, this is this guy. But they're all from my wedding. Mm -hmm. He's in every picture. So everybody thinks he's one of the because he worked for my dad. I never say, not not large, just mm -hmm. you know, just everybody the guy next else. To him. Yeah, yeah. So um I go through all that 
And then um, we get to, we finally get to Jersey on Friday. My whole family, my, my dad's sisters are there. And uh, you know, one of them lost her husband who was with my dad. And he was one of six. And I, my entire family, the entire Harvey family is at my dad's house, which is shocking because my <laughs> dad's wife actually let anybody in the house. And um, he gets a phone call. The guy that ran Wild Blue or ran Windows, Jules, was calls his cell phone. Because he knew me from when I worked there, and I used mm -hmm. to talk food with him because I'm an asshole. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely Jules, the guy who, who ran, he um, hasn't seen this. He has, I, I don't think he's seen this since then. So yeah. he he takes my notebook and he goes outside and he's talking on the cell phone. And I'm trying to figure out who he's talking to. Oh wow! And oh, you, yeah, you that's go through it because so it was, he was, it was not easy to so, do this. He has yeah. to give my family the news. Uh, yeah, so I'd rather not. But so so Jules was the guy who said. So this is my handwriting. All the six stairs were in the core. So uh, below, so where the plane went in, there was a 35 story um, hole, hole yeah. and the staircases were in that hole and it was like a 3,500 degree like jet fuel type thing. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you're gonna, and I told you there was a lot of like charlatanism and people trying to make money off saying, hey listen, I heard Emmer Carvey, I have him in my house. Like, you know, like there was all that kind of stuff. He's like, don't believe it, um, they're all dead. Yeah, yeah, he was like, so we had spoke to people who had gotten out beforehand, you know, who went down beforehand, and they knew that the Harvey Young crew was still up there. So he was the first guy to slap anybody with, this was the first concrete, so I wrote this down that day. This was the, yeah, so this was the first concrete thing that we had. And so then I had to go down stairs. Well, yeah, I was outside. I had to come in to a family of people who were like talking about where are we going and stuff like that. Wow. And so I was the one who had to tell them that everyone was dead. I forgot that was in there. Yeah. As soon as Which you said not, it, I was like, you know, oh. it's, yeah. it's like that's something that you there, don't want to do. There is a yeah. you know you don't want to be the bearer of bad news, of yeah. course, but there's also some level of like like yeah. you said, you don't want. Schemers, scammers, you don't want no. false hope, you don't want, yeah, we went you know. To, we went to the... And you have to be able to move on immediately. Yeah. Like, I think for some people who didn't know, or if they didn't find anything concrete, they didn't want to believe it, so they were they kept holding on to this hope that they're going to find... And, and maybe because I was there, I, like, I saw it firsthand, and there was nobody coming out of that. Like, yeah. nobody's coming we out of that. The where, where they, were, they were above, or they were in that They're hole? Above. They were above. above. It, it came in where well, Alger no. was. It came in the 92nd floor. Mm -hmm. My dad was 107. So, so it was John, more that they just well, couldn't escape. John and Mike yeah. were essentially hit by the plane, and Rick and the boys were above Which is giant we, we were saying earlier, it was crazy. For John and Mike, it was, they were either going to be there where the plane was, or they Josh got to Schroeder, Mike, and they're Mike like those Smooch. two guys just didn't have yeah. a shot. The plane came in yeah. on their, you know, I'm, and I'm in hindsight, I am thankful they were at their desks because it was like instant, like that, you know. And for you know, John wasn't married, but uh, Mike was, and I think for his wife, knowing that she knew exactly where he was, doing what he loved doing, and had no clue because. I mean, I was outside. I didn't hear it. Like nobody knew. It was like it was instantaneous. Like there was no, you know, oh, there had to be. I mean, they were they were at the moment of impact. Like yeah. I mean, and if there was, they didn't have enough time to get adrenaline. Right? You know what I mean? No, like, no, it no. Was that, so that's 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 fast. Dumb. Yeah. And, and the, for the his thought of yeah. being, parents, John like his, was twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah. At the time, like he was just starting. Like I said, you know, handsome kid. Um, you know, same age as me. So that one hurt the most. But she glances over it. When she went on Fox News, I think the way she got on Fox News is because we were online at the Armory when they did the swab of her and her mom to find out the DNA to test against the bone fragments. Mm -hmm. But people were out there like with the pictures there, like just, have you seen him? Have you oh, seen him? Oh, I mean, the, the, was, the, the was, billboard, like the people yeah. posted. So, so much desperation. Out, all over Grand Central, yeah. all over everywhere. Have you seen this person? Have you seen yeah. that person? But when they and found out like, there was somebody from the floor, Fox News was like, can you come on? Mm -hmm. Oh, and Linda so Vester, she, she was great. Linda Vester. So she went on this thing, and like she said, she's holding up all these great pictures of M Mike Tamuccio and me. And you, and, and, you, just said, and you, and you, and, then, and you. Yeah. But I'll tell you, we, everyone lost somebody. Secondary, tertiary yeah. relationships, particularly New Yorkers. Yeah. So, so much so that if you saw Annie, and you saw was, the fact that I was, I was dead, right? You might not have been able to reach out to her. There's a good chance you might not, because you weren't that close to her, mm -hmm. you weren't that close to me, but you still loved us, mm -hmm. right? Or we had those secondary friends in common. So when we started going to funerals, there were three occasions, 
And you think I felt good when we were talking about the dating thing. There were three people. occasions where we walked into wakes and, they find out and you're people alive. were like, it's like they what? saw oh a dead man. God. They were like, holy shit, you're fucking alive. That's like a and little I'll tell you why. burst of hope. It's, like. it's crazy. I mean, not, that was and a they weird so, feeling. They were so ha not happy enough to have given us a call to make sure she was okay, right? But <laughs> still, it was, but this is a time, Kev, that if you were downtown and you were a New Yorker, you didn't know if people were fucking alive or dead, man. Yeah. It's, it's and it's crazy. and it's early enough that mm -hmm. you know you're not just firing off a text or no, let me never. let me see yeah. if they were tweeting recently no, or there active was on Instagram no social media. or, or no have social they media. posted on their no. Facebook wall and you have confirmation. One hundred percent, at least yeah. alive. This is like you either have their number or you don't. That's right. And if you can't t contact them, that's it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, that's why I made the list. Like I was like, how do I get in touch right. with everybody? Which is scary to think because something like that happens now and. Everybody's fucked. Nobody knows any numbers. No one's making that list. Nobody Nobody's has everything. It's just, it's all gone if the cell phone doesn't work, you know? That's right. But as soon as cell that's phones true. come up, everyone will bust ping. Um, right. Up, Here, I'm, you I'm know alive, what I mean? Like, that's, like, that's active, the benefit. Whatever it is. Safe. Yeah, yeah. But, like, so at, so during the day of 9 11, I had the building fall where I ran to the, uh, all Stuyvesant. the way to the, um, through um, the World Financial Center, all the way to the rail, where I thought I was gonna jump in the river. We're all pushed up against the rail as the dust came across us. And you can't put a discount on the fact that firemen were the only ones running this way. Yeah. And everyone else was running that way. To see that was beautiful. Crazy. Crazy. Cops were running this way with us. I, I told you, I almost picked up a gun, because cop dropped his gun, I always wanted a gun. So I almost picked up a gun, I missed it, and I kept running. Mm -hmm. So I went that way, and then I went up, and, uh, she went, she eventually left. I and clocked the, only the ticket thing, before I left. The only, I actually uh, clocked it. I wrote directions because yeah. I didn't know how to get to Brooklyn. I actually clocked it clocked. like it's a <laughs> just, yeah. You guys so, are just yeah, fucking, fucking robots. There's tickets. something seriously yeah. wrong with me. So I, we, uh, we're both, we get to uh, the east side and then you walk across the, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge. I got to the Brooklyn Bridge and then they closed it. Manhattan. They closed it the second I got there because right. they said that it was you know, a bomb threat. So then right, I had to walk right. up to point, the Manhattan yes. Bridge mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I walked over that. And then we, so once we got over to the New York, we still haven't seen each other. We haven't seen each other since all this shit went down. We haven't spoken to each other. Yeah, and then we, we knew that on the other side of Brooklyn, since the downtown athletic club thing wasn't gonna work, get to Brooklyn and then Uncle Jim has a wine store on Court Street. Scott Oswan's on Court Street. Shout so out. You, you, <laughs> and so then now we're walking across the bridges. But you haven't talked, but no. you've last time seen we each spoke other. Was, but did you both like kind of have an inkling to go there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, Holy I, shit. Yeah. yeah. His, well, his mother was our lifeline. She would call him. She would call me. She would call him. She would so, call oh, him. Oh, so there was some. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay. so now it wasn't we can't just like you to, both decided oh, yeah, to go yeah, to the yeah, wine yeah. store. Oh, no. It was, okay. makes sense for me. Yeah. Find the nearest booze. There's Lawrence. I didn't know where to go. He's shaking a bottle of martini with blue cheese olives. I didn't know where to go. And my dad's sister. Um, said go to go to Jim's wine store. Got it. So got then it. I called his mother and I said Virginia said to him. drive to walk there. That's like the most. That's the what's, closest thing. What's that moment like when you who gets there first? So you're sitting there waiting for. He was waiting yeah. for me. And like she yeah, walks it's, it's through the door. It's one of those things. Yeah. It's, it, so that's kind of listen. I don't mean to get overly upset because the Jules thing was tough. But then when we were reunited towards it, it was it was kind of back. We had to go right to work. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we had to figure out a way to then get home and then to try and figure out, because again, I, I mean, I think she's glancing by it. We thought that there might be still people alive. Mm -hmm. Like when she was doing the swabs, I don't think she was doing the swabs thinking it was gonna be for bone Identify fragments and stuff yeah. like that. Like we were buying into it. It wasn't just the weak-minded. We're not weak-minded people that, that go for fucking, you know, send me your social mm -hmm. security number. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there but, was- But was it genuine or was it like, I just- part? To, to, to have some hope. I told her was I was it like, the luckiest I need, guy in the, the world. The same way I want to like, I, I am going to believe in Jesus in this moment because I need something or were you actually oh, no. like, you know, I believe no. that they're alive or you was it, when you I got to have some sense of hope and positivity. Yeah. You know when you're laying in bed and you have this idea that, you know, this movie producer is going to make a movie about you? Mm -hmm. Like whether you're, you know, somebody in grade school or somebody rich and famous, you always mm -hmm. have this idea, like when they direct the movie and who's, who's going to play, play me and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's more of a fantasy like that. I right. knew from, I, I knew that from the kind of person that my dad was, there was two reasons I knew that they were gone. And uh, one, I knew that the kind of person my dad was, he would have never let me stay as long. Like I, I clocked my ticket at twelve ten. I walk, I walked into my uncle's store at four. Something like mm -hmm. four ten, mm -hmm. we'll say. But so I there were knew, thousands heading over the bridge. Got it. There I were hundreds there of thousands no being way. water lifted from the southern tip too. So I knew there was no way my dad would have let me stay till twelve ten. 
he would have stayed. If he was alive, he would have been got, helping. But he would have found to get me. In contact he would have and say, yeah. get the hell out. One hundred percent. So the fact that there was no contact and you were there as long as yeah. you were, you're like. And and he would have. But is there any thought like he just couldn't? No, no, not 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 even because the other reason was is that um, the guy that was with him, Tommy Sullivan, he had I think he had two cell phones. So like he was very good at one one family. And, yeah, 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 he was. He would have loved technology today, oh, and um, so he still, would have called his wife. You still do the DNA swabs because that wasn't until later. A, that wasn't until later. One in a until chance, yeah. or just like, and and you're and, and to get you're him kind back. of the so you're hoping, believing. I'm, well, you're, I'm, you're I'm thinking, preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. Right, like right. Uh, that that you know, like as much as it was, I'm it much was, more of a realist. It was a terrible time. Like we talk about our marriage now. I put my marriage up against anybody's. Yeah, anybody's. You can get and I can tell you right now. My marriage for those years following 9-11 were terrible. He was a it was, saint. It was a terrible time to be married he was to a her. Saint. It was a terrible time to be married to people, you know, like her. Mm -hmm. And to the point where you were like, hey, did you see the um the documentary? Like Oh, like what you I, asked me yesterday. Same I, thing. I had to I had to put my foot down after a while uh, yeah. because every time, you know, when somebody says, Holy shit, you saw the guy jumping. The like falling when they, man, I was convinced was like someone I knew. She's looking I, for the fucking face. Yeah. Right. I was. You know? I just messaged her the other day because yeah. I I started watching the new one on Netflix just to kind of get back into that mindset yeah. and remember it. Yeah. And I said, "Do you watch that stuff?" And she said, "I used to be so obsessed that you had to lock the TV, large lock the you TV." You know, and I, I try to tell people too, like imagine on the anniversary of your relatives, like your dad, your uncle, and all your friends' death, you used to you turn on the TV for those first couple of years, and all they showed was the the car that hit your dad. Mm -hmm. I knew God how forbid. Krista McAuliffe's like, you daughter know I mean? felt yeah. when she was in the, the space, space shuttle. shuttle. Yes. I you knew know? how yeah. they felt. Like I, I remember the daughter like saying, the whole you know, spectacle of your yeah. tragic moment. Someone had asked her daughter, she was on TV, and she said, I'm always asked, you know, how did I feel when I see that? She's like, and I try to explain to them, you're showing me my mother dying over, over and, and over. And how, over, and over again. how do you think I feel? Because the news Once networks love it. The, the, right. the, the, the mm -hmm. news porn, the death, I never the thought of it until I, this happened. I don't know if this is maybe just for me, if I didn't see it. I feel like as now we're coming up on 20th anniversary, I'm watching this new Netflix one. I feel like I'm seeing more stuff that I never yeah. did. I'd be able to tell you if he'd unlock the Please. TV. I, well, I, I just feel I feel like over <laughs> here yeah. we I think it was different overseas in Europe, but I feel like here we were very sheltered from people jumping. Yeah, there wasn't that yeah. much of that. Right. You know, there was that one famous picture of the falling man, but I think that's kind of where I felt like the news like drew the line. They you know? did. They, and they then, were they were very they uh, edited a lot. And I'm watching this one mm -hmm. on Netflix the other day, and you know, there's this footage of a guy. Uh, just a homemade camera, uh, amateur. I was surprised we didn't have it more all of the that. way, and I'm like, I, yeah. I've never seen now that you can't before. Like your uncle Bob was one of the first guys found. No, Mike. So what happened was, so we go to the armory on Thursday, the 13th, and um, you wait in these lines, and they have books that look like this, like this, like that. But they're, I mean, the books are like, Huge. yeah. And you're supposed to go through them, and when you find the person you're looking for's name. Next to it is a code. You write the code down because this is all like pre-tech, right? Absolutely, like it's, yeah. So like I mean, thank God paper. I had my Bible with me, right? Yeah. And um, I, the first person I go, like, we're all looking. His dad's looking in books. I'm looking in books. He's looking in books. The first person I find, I'm and, not going to use these, his name. These so are names that are people who have like registered. My guys. These but, are but my you know guys. I mean? like, I'm what looking. Is, what's in the book? So, Alive, dead. Right. Like, like if they were in a hospital, or if Got they were right, identified, okay. if they were located, if they right. were found, whatever it is. So you're trying to find. You want to find the code. So right. I got my nine guys. I'm looking for them. And the, fir the first name that any of us get a hit on is me. And I look across, and it says Morg. It doesn't have a code. Morg? So I wrote down, yeah. yeah. So I go over to the lady, and I'm like, he's found. He's in the morgue? Like, like, like I just said it kind of like, I, like I should have had a filter, but I didn't right. because I really just don't for some reason. And um, like the guy from the National Guard, because they were standing there, he like he dropped like, right, he dropped the gates and just shut the thing down. They went, they grabbed all the books. It was like the only typo that they had. Like, they're like, we can't have people finding, like, they were yeah. furious. Like, it was just, it was just a mistake. Instead of the code for morgue, they put Say the word. The word so then they took every book and then they shut the thing down. Oh my God. And I was like, Talk about, Holy like, the shit. worst time for a clerical logistical yeah. So error. then I knew we found, he was the first one that, and so, you know, as I'm reading that, his son happened to call me and be like, they identified my dad. He was, now he had been on the phone with his dad from the moment that 
like he had found out that this has happened, and then he spoke to him a couple of times, and then he was on the phone with him from t like maybe ten nineteen to like when the building went down. He had spoken to his dad the to the very through. last second, and um, which I think was such a like for him it messed like it really upset him. But I thought, wow, how great for you know the dad because wow, yeah. he was you knows Mike. Oh, Mike Piss. Yeah, yeah. Piscola, he was yeah. able to, you know, and I kept saying to him. You know, for your dad, he's so, you gave him something to focus on because mm -hmm. he's only focused on his kid now. Mm -hmm. He's only focused on making, he's saying to you all the things. He's like, yeah, but he probably could have been trying to get out. I'm like, he doesn't get out. No, he's on the, know, he's on the 109. Yeah, I mean, he's on the, like, he's with, there's I, no way I, I, to get out. I feel out. like when I, I hardly remember that. Yeah. I, I hardly remember the army. Like, there was so much stuff everything. going on. She, and, and she does retain a lot more than that to me. There was so much. Going on, man. I was very I aware sure that I lived in the moment yeah, of every second. It, it's yeah, like you, a you block mechanism, it out. You, you I didn't. I I lived in every moment because I just felt like I I grew up with these guys. Yeah. I mean, they had worked for my dad from like some like one of them started when he was eighteen. You know, yeah, and yeah. like I had grown up with them from the time that I started clerking. Like they got me drunk the first time when I was thirteen. Yeah, you know, you've like lived all your moments, all big of them with, with them. them, and Did, so. You go back into work mode, like, when did you start to grieve more and oh. process, like, <laughs> what, last I, week? Yeah, like, like, I mean, so is it something that, that like, you So all of a sudden pushed. it was, like, psychosomatic pain in her jaw, yeah. like, multiple root canals to try and get this thing out. It wasn't, it was just there. Then I just needed was, a ton of drugs. Teeth apart, yeah, lips closed, teeth apart, like... And that's what I'm saying. We tried the whole. I had maxillofacial pain doctors say like, uh, it's it's here. It's, here, it's yeah, not yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah you, she right. internalized you know? a lot of it. And but is are, are you still a rocket? Like, are you crying at night? Are you weeping in the wasn't shower? Crying, but it was because no. it's like, like you got to get some of that out. And if you're keeping it in, your body's probably like, you know, physically manifesting itself. But every nine eleven afterwards, and I at know some we have point the, I will. At, 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 after every nine eleven, like sitting there and watching and waiting for the names to be read, you know, which is cool. And listen, my son read the names yeah, and he did moment, it, he yeah. pured it and all that stuff. So that's a beautiful thing. But sometimes like watching that stuff was almost like an angry grieving for her. Yeah. And it yeah, didn't help mad. anybody. Like, oh, you know, grandma still cries. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, who are you talking to? Like, yeah. I would get, I would I never would get, win I would get I've, I couldn't do it so, anymore. So it's, it's been 20 years since I've won an argument past October, uh, August 15th. Right. Because then I know that she's just, just fucking stop. unbearable yeah, 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 yeah. for a month right. to where even if she's absolutely wrong, you could put that on. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like some people say, oh, um, my time of the month. That was her time of the year. Right. For 20 fucking years. I, I, I will tell you that <laughs> sorry. 17 years. Yeah, yeah what a pain in the ass yeah, she is, Larry. No, you, you know, know the so sun, sorry. You the lost sun, a fucking <laughs> argument. The, I sun, dare. the sun rises and sets in her ass. <laughs> for me, you know that. I mean, everyone knows that. There's very. Whatever, yeah. but I would he tell you, he really, you should have left me like within, like you did your, you I did just, your due diligence options after I lost the a hair. year. <laughs> if I, I would have just lost the weight and gained the hair, no. but I'm telling you right now, the 17 years afterwards, I wrote that stupid blog, yeah, and I put that out there into the ether for the first time because nobody cared about my story. You never nobody talked still about it on Reporter or anything. Never, yeah. never. It just no. didn't fucking. I didn't. Yeah. We never talked. We never talked about blog it either, though. Right. I feel like that was the yeah. first time we really sat so down and talked about it. So then we sat down really? and talked when he about wrote it. That. Yeah. Seventeen Get years the fuck later, out of here. I'm like, because it was all I did, day in and day out. That's all I did. But you never had. You never talked to him about it. And so I wrote that fucking blog. And imagine I put that it out there. he had to live with me, and then imagine if I unloaded on him. Oh, that would have just been that would have been mean. We we I put the blog out there, and I tell people all the time I was just as uh, ready to hit delete as I was to hit publish mm -hmm. back when they used to let me publish blogs before I became a high risk blogger. And I tell you <laughs> the amount of good that I got back from that blog. Yeah, the amount of good, like that's the best part of Barstool. That that thing. Hey, I think so, you were even like a top four blog of the year. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I, I came in third that year. That's Holy fucking shit. criminal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, you know, like uh, Dave, you know, eating a slice of pizza was number yeah. one or some shit. I thought but that was so, good. I thought it was good. I thought it kept him humble. But then, to then, <laughs> that's a one of the best blogs that's ever been written, let yeah, alone that year. A year and a half later, she did the Twisted History mm -hmm. of 9-11 with me last year. She does Twisted History with yeah. me. She does all the research for it. So she co-hosted it with me, and I said, listen, I would 
this is huge. Man. That's because I was, I was like, able to talk to I you. I would and John. never fucking ask you to do something mm-hmm. like this. I've been telling you to not do stuff. She did it, well, and it was as cathartic. Yeah, people yeah, reaching yeah, yeah. out and just being so fucking nice that maybe me, the way that I handled, and this apology to you, like maybe the way that I handled it, like, hey, listen, let's move on, let's move on, without ever getting that shit out. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was partially Not detrimental. Yeah. You know, like that's the weight. Because now, right? Like, but I was also raised that way. Like, you yeah. Know. Well, you know what's good about this job, in a sense, is like I think we're all raised that way to some extent. Like, uh-huh. push it down. Oh, push yeah. Push back. You know, like put some lace curtains absolutely, in front. Absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. So, I don't think of it as I would never sit down and just unload all my problems onto you guys. But I'm working now, and I'm right. putting out. I'm actually putting food on the table by putting out that podcast or this yeah. blog. Imagine and somebody asked us to do this ten years ago. I would have told you Never. to go fuck yourself. Exactly. Right. I would have told and, and, 15 years ago? that door of 15 like, years you know, ago? If they asked us to do this 15 years ago, did they, and while it was even more fresh in our fucking minds, yeah, and I would have but, seen that stupid piece of paper, I would have told everyone to go fuck, fuck themselves. Off. Yeah. But, and you know, time bad. heals wounds, and yeah. then this, it's like... Sometimes I sometimes I, I go back and forth where it's like this is a private moment that I shouldn't be sharing. See, I didn't have that. Or if, I didn't have any private moments. Yeah. Like when the first plane hit. And yeah, you're right. I, I meant for me like anything that I write about. Right. But well, that's because yeah, it yeah, is yeah, private. Yeah. But you never got it to be private because no. it was a fucking worldwide spectacle mm-hmm. yeah. from day yeah. one, and you had to share it with everyone else who lost. You know, any right. anybody else has their father murdered. Mm-hmm. It's you and your. You know, we take care of you and we worry about you. You're one of, you know, They 50, expected 000. me to like, take care of them. Like, yeah, it and wasn't, that's the worst part is, yeah, no one's taking care of you, you're taking care of them. But I think it and, was, and I, I don't know if you had, I said it earlier, I'm better off that I had to do that. Like for you to put this stuff out and write about it and talk about it, it's better for you mm-hmm. to do it. Because if I hadn't, hap- if it didn't happen to me publicly, I would have never survived. Right. I would have never yes, recovered from that. Nothing would have. You never would have put it out. You no, never I would have, have. I would have internalized that. that because I would have. Been, I would have died of cancer in two thousand and three. You, do you think because you had other people to share it with, or it just wasn't even an option to hide it because you? Couldn't? It wasn't an option to hide right. it because it if was, I could have, I would have. It's almost a blessing, like blessing 100%. and a curse that it's so Abs- such a spectacle, but kids. also you. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have kids. I wouldn't have a marriage. Yeah, I would have nothing. It's because it like forces you to mm-hmm. go through it and, yeah. and process it a little bit. I would have kept it all in. I yeah. would have self imploded, and you would have found me. Like I would have been. Interesting. It would have been months before anybody knew that I was dead in my apartment. Ugh. Honest to God, yeah. I would have internalized it all. I wouldn't have spoken to anybody. Terrible it's true. I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. I had Sick like the, the best thing that got me through it was keeping myself out there. Mm-hmm. Like if I didn't, I didn't have a choice. But if I had been given a choice, I you would have hit it. You oh yeah, I would have. Cl- yeah. I would have. I would have been a cave troll for That's interesting. forever. So we went to John Mulhern, who had. He was done my dad's a, partner on the Amex. Yeah, it was a partnership with one of her dad's business ventures on the Amex. And we, you know, we said, please help us. And he had lent us. I wasn't giving his, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you say it's nicer than he man. did. Like I, I, I talked to him about it, like a gentleman. Mm-hmm. And he knew that I was, you know, you know, my gun wasn't loaded. So he gave us some. He would pull me into his office. That, yeah, she and he, was every week. overwhelmed. Like I was actually the guy. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, so he was instrumental in helping us keep it alive. And then I went back to work. Yeah. So then all her. She's on her own, yeah. All fucking he had her. A lot of, he had a lot of clout, and he had yeah. a lot of um, people listen to him. So being that he was my dad's partner, he used to call me in a couple times a week and say, you know, who's your biggest fear? What's your biggest threat? What's going to let you open? What's going to make you close? Mm-hmm. And, and he showed me how to run it. Mm-hmm. And then um, he was like, listen, your dad had three divisions of his company. Mine and the two two dollar operations. I'm giving you all his money back from his, like whatever capital oh, wow. interest he had. Here, here's mm-hmm. a check. He cut me a check, and mm-hmm. and he's like, now figure out what you're gonna do with, and the other two. He's like, you have to you have to identify your biggest enemy. Like he was yeah, very. Yeah, yeah. And these he things gave me a it, playbook, and I played it. I I, every, I, and, I ran and every play. What's sick is you probably do need to have your guard up and be ready because there's these fucking skunks. They weren't these snakes who are ready to pounce. There and, weren't. Yeah. You could count on one hand the amount of snakes that I dealt with. Yeah. And I can I could give you names of three right off the top. And mm-hmm. the, and I don't think I hit five. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And um. They they were the closest people to me, and they were like they were two of them. My dad absolutely knew about, mm. and I found that. After, after the fact, the fact. 
And um, I mean, I had like he had season tickets to the Knicks, to the Rangers, to every you name it. Mm -hmm. And like all of a sudden they were gone. They were gone. Oh, Someone had bought yeah. them out, and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Wow!" Like it There's was weird stuff. There, like yeah, weird like, shit happened. Body hasn't and, literally even been. It's not even cold, yeah. Yeah, there, but there like, was no intrinsic value to his operation. His operation made money month to month, and that's how you sure. pulled stuff out. Like sure. it's not like a wine store where all of a sudden the guy dies in 9-11 and you take it and you sell all his wine. Mm -hmm. right. And it's $2 million worth of wine we and then you commission. whack it up. You know, so his it's commissionable a, business thing that keeps paid going. his bills yes. and then had profits. Right. And that's it. So if it wasn't doing that, it didn't have any intrinsic worth. Right. It had a book of customers, which mm -hmm. is has some degree of worth, who were willing to work with everyone who was dead. Right. So it wasn't like we were sitting pretty either with, you know, you know, we didn't have the wine store. Right? Yeah. No, that, we had to earn those commissions. I sat down with all my sure. employees. I said, who yeah. wants to work? I said, I got Jesus I got six Christ, widows. Danny. I got to pay them through the end of the year. Yeah. I got to pay them. They're entitled to 18 months of COBRA after <sighs> the, their, like their end of the year. Like, we're going to pay them to December 31st. Do you think that helped, having that burden, too, to like... Oh, God, yeah. Because, again, you can't sit there and just 100%. sue and, and cry, you know? Times. We didn't do everything right, but yeah. a lot of times it was thankless. My yeah. employee like said, and all our customers, I called them all, and I'm like, listen, if I can get these guys to execute the orders, will you give us the order flow? And they said, 100%. And, and you know, they gave us, they paid us a little more than they had been, but we, I paid every employee, I paid every widow up until the 31st. I gave them all a bonus that year, that, uh -huh. you know, half of what they got the year before, but I, I mean, gave them all listen, a bonus, it's fair, and then I paid on. all their COBRA for the following 18 months. Wow. They, yeah, were having, they were having kids. Like, it's incredible, it, like yeah. they had like a lot of them had small kids. Like I, I was at all their weddings. You mm. know, like it, there was just I, I couldn't not. And then at the same time, I couldn't not, not do. I couldn't not do it, knowing that I'm what, the reason their husband couldn't do it. Uh, like, I mean, you're not. But I totally am. I totally no, am. No, you're not. So then, do you really feel, feel that way? Though? I mean, one hundred percent. You carry that. One hundred percent. And I'm sure you still feel that way to this day, day and you'll yeah. feel that way Every until day. you kick a bucket. And but, so then, but like, it's the, not though. Yeah, no. I, and believe me, there's no <laughs> way in this two hours you're going to convince there's otherwise. something that I've been trying to do for twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 you know that's what it is, right? Like so, everyone bears scars in different ways. And like, you know, I moved on. I have the benefit of being able to do that. Like everything mm -hmm. rolls off my back and some people don't, she's one of them. But now we're in such a, like a good place. Like we are, we're in a good place. Everything is in the rear view mirror and now it's more of a traditional grieving type thing. Mm -hmm. Now it's a more traditional sharing memories and stuff like that, like what we're doing today than it you, has been hate in 20 years. the anniversary? Years. Like, are you a, It's awful. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, still, are you, are you worried the about doors? this year being like the bigger spectacle? She has some political concerns and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. you know, but. I don't, I don't like know. hearing Afghanistan, like, with, like I don't I mean, hear just the, the word. I mean, what are the fucking chances? Or maybe there is a reason, maybe that's, you know, who knows. But the fact that it's just 2021 it and I'm hearing about the Taliban and mm -hmm. Afghanistan right. again. It's they like, come, what in come. the world yeah. like is that's the, Like, I don't think anybody who went through what we went through as a, as a city, as a state, as, as knowing somebody who went through it, any part of our country, having them and, and those people monopolize and dominate the timelines and the tick, like, just, just hearing the, like, it's just unfair. Like, yes. I almost, and you can't ignore it because that's the worst thing that you can do, right? Yeah, you can't, right, you can't right. pretend that it doesn't but exist. But you also it's can't like beat it, fight it, right? You know, it's like yeah. Yeah. so you just have to you just have to turn a blind can't eye to it. Can't even verbalize it anymore. What's that? And we can't even verbalize it anymore. Yeah. But I would tell you that you know we have the street that we go by every now and again, and it's pretty fucking cool. We never were interested in going down to the 9/11 Memorial Museum. Never had any fucking interest until in that came in and wanted until to until somebody it. said go. So yeah. maybe a year and a half ago, we went down for the first time, and it said family of 9/11 victims was a separate line. Who knows? We went over there. She was like Antoinette Harvey McCarthy, yeah, and they're I like, I'm sorry that he had to say that out loud. I apologize. Yeah, so, and then uh, uh, oh, Emma Harvey, boom, right in white glove treatment, and it was nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Nice. Did you, it was were you invested in like the Freedom Tower being built and things like that? No, that, I thought they should have uh, built them like, exactly we, the I, same I, as I was they did. A fan of that as they well. they should have yeah. put them the way they foot higher or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, two big okay. middle finger type things. Well, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I guess you know maybe it can't happen for various reasons or should have happened, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I, the, the, the people getting caught up in things like that, and I understand there is some 
importance to that, but also yeah. like when you're fighting over a build or like the conspiracy theory people, does that like what? I love that, those. I like get a that? kick out of them. They make me, they actually make me laugh. <laughs> like, you know, because like. That would probably piss me it's, off, I would imagine. It's, 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 it's absolute ridiculousness. Yeah. So like you just kind of go with it. Um, I was actually better thinking than I am. about I'd be Bush like knew. arguing all these. Oh, what? <laughs> Bush, yeah, Bush, Bush knew. knew. Yeah. Like, yeah, like all that stuff. I mean, but you know, I can see it's so but silly. But some of it makes sense. Like oh, self, yeah, if you look and the into, reason I say that is because like they, this is dragging up some old shit, Kev. I no, got, I'm gonna I, have to like, take her away from the fucking computer now. Yeah. No, and, and believe me, she wears Sorry. the pants of the family. But but I, I just You're not all let me this give stuff is coming back theory. to me. I know. Oh, go ahead, go I, know. Well, we, I do we, we, think we. that a lot of times people say like the way they fell and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People forget like you could walk into anything, anywhere, wearing anything. So if, there are, if someone was hiding on like the 70th floor with a backpack, I'm sure- Entirely it's, possible. If, yeah. you know, and if, they really wouldn't, nobody would have known. Nobody and, would know. Yeah. So if the building came it's, down it's, and they blew up, like, yeah, it's of course it's gonna seem like that. It's interesting though that you are able to uh, it's all the same to me. Theorize that, Doesn't matter. hypothesize that. Yeah, I guess it's all so. the same yeah, to yeah. me. Like I could, I could see that bothering some people, but yeah. Oh, yeah, also. Of course. And everybody tried to do, and that's one thing I think. Like today's time is a new, and like with all the technology and the social media, mm -hmm. is is that's where humanity is lacking. Oh, and you tell I me. say that yeah, I'm sure you you deal with it, people with comments all the time, but when you watched a documentary. 20 years ago, or we'll say 15 years ago, they did filter stuff. Like you saw the falling man, you didn't see, like you would, like legitimately, I could hear. A thud, yeah. Oh like, my God. like you just spent an hour hearing it, like it is what it is. But they didn't show that on, yeah. they yeah, kept Yeah, there was it. some There was no respect. 100%. There was some yeah. level of like, hang Now on. you can't do anything without someone throwing their weight around. Well, I got a camera, I got a, I got a you know, mm. like for example, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, it hasn't mean. been a first person account that's that's hit it on the head yet. So, you know, really? the, um, no one had the, you know, like imagine it? I would have been like a 4G recording of the whole thing. Yeah, like I that, that didn't exist. Live. Right. The, I mean, right I feel like I've either heard the, the you know, every year the, the red bandana story, the kid from Boston yeah. College, yeah. love it and it's it becomes, yeah. you know, a movie. Right. And then there's the I'm raw accounts, like you said, it. of watching people fall from the sky. There's not like an in between. There's not, uh, you know. I mean, it's it's a yeah. It's tough to tackle because there was so so when they went after 9/11, right? Everything was everything was legit. Like I said, the armory books, right? The, you had the numbers, and you had to look for things. So now, now it's like we'll say a year later. Not a year, like just July, like the following, 2002. Mm -hmm. And um, in May of 2002, my mom, my sister and I went in to give DNA. We went to the medical examiner's office and because in the middle of running this company and doing everything, right, and I'm trying, I'm trying my hardest to do my best, I'm still like trying to f find like these guys, like people are, because I'm the first point of contact. Because mm -hmm. as soon as they find them, you know, these wives can't get any benefits without a death certificate. Mm. You can't get a death There's certificate a body. without a body. Like, so like, there's just all these things. So now I'm still trying to do this for my dad, obviously, because I'm still a child. So I call up, now my sister and I, my mom and I do this in May. July, I just just on a whim, I find like that, I don't know where, but his PO number, like his, like you have to call up and mm. you call the medical examiner's mm. office and you give them a number and they tell you if they found anything, right? So it's now July, I'm, it's a beautiful day out. I'm just cleaning out my, my booth because we're slow as hell. And um, I call the medical examiner's office and I'm like, I'm just looking to see if you guys have found anything on my dad. What's his PO number? I give it, right? So like I kept this in my, in my, in, in my office, right? So I'm reading there and I'm starting to shake because this, this part bothers me. But this is, this is what I start to write down. They're like, oh, PO number, this is what they give me. He starts to rattle off all the things. Oh, Jesus Christ. And this is how they're, and they're trying to be very, and he was so nice and he was so kind. And then he's giving me all the hits of all the things that they found. And eight, I'm taking eight. it like I'm taking a quote, not realizing what this man is, down. what I'm writing down. Eight legs, separate PNP, bone, chunk, small, large, rib, mandible, yeah. femur, living bone, leg, ulmer. So I get the one guy that is completely like not, so he just Season. starts rattling off the pieces they found. He's right. like, the only thing we're missing is uh, 
someone to come and claim them. We've been trying to claim, we've been trying to contact you for months, you just haven't called us back. I'm like, uh, that's what? That's on our step. He was, they were calling my, like, so he married this woman who was just completely, like, in it for the money. She's on a cruise to Alaska, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, wait, you've, you've, you like, called me? I'm like, yeah, like, I'm nah. like, you have them? Yeah. He's like, well, we've had them since March. Oh, my he was God. So he, my dad was actually, where he was, he was actually in the elevator. So he, like, I don't know if any of the other guys were with him, but he was, he was, like, when you watch the first, see? He's coming to visit. <laughs> it's true. Um, don't even get me started on those. No, yeah. That's them wrapping it up. But um, <laughs> March 11th, they had gone under the North Tower into the basement. And when you watch like the first video of the two French brothers that did the first documentary, mm -hmm. they go into the elevator shaft and they open it. And then the guy's like, no, there's n like no survivors in there. So they go up. So where they found my dad was in, elevator in the elevator. So, But he was like, I guess they had, I'm, I'm guessing that it was from you know, fire or smoke and time being under there. But, um, yeah, she hadn't like, like, and it's, and when I tell you like things like that, when you get information like that, like, holy shit, like all this time, and you start to see like all the, you know, then, cause you don't think the people close to you are going to be doing this. Then I start looking, I'm like, holy shit, like, like forged checks, like who's cashing oh. checks from a guy who died on 9-11? Like, it's wild to see that yeah, yeah. so many people, like I had an entire nation behind me, like supporting everybody, like people being like, listen, I'll give you business. You come in every day. Mm -hmm, I will mm -hmm. give you as much business as you possibly can stand. And like I had employees like not seeing their families. One of my employees had brain cancer and she had surgery. She came back, right? right. Like, I mean... These were people who was like so loyal that like I was. And then some of the people closest or who you should were like, be Holy the Christ, most supportive like, are the worst. Yeah. So I am thankful that they were, you know, weeded out early. But the way people, it really makes you appreciate how people you don't know will stand behind you. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. it's absolutely well, nuts. that was like the one good, quote unquote, good thing. Yeah. Uh, especially compared to how it goes today is like there was such a camaraderie and there was yeah. such a rally yeah. around each other and like I mean I was young so I wasn't in the I wasn't I didn't know anything about politics so maybe I, that was over my head but I don't remember not to say that there was no of course that line was very political but it wasn't mm -hmm. so common that like I wasn't hearing it at school I wasn't hearing it right. at like well, they protected you they yeah, insulated you and, that's, and, that and, guy. and maybe it was happening at an older age but I feel like now everything's so politicized and everything's so polarized mm -hmm. and there was no and maybe that's because there's not a common Some enemy group, there's yeah. not you know like when, when they were when, when they figured out who it was and what it was were you like Let's go to war. Let's go get. Was there some it was sense patriotism? Of, yeah, there was, there like was I don't think we're going to get that patriotism again. Yeah, like you know, we speak to Rob O'Neill, and we're big fans of Rob, and he was like, you know, I went to, war, you know, I found out about it, and mm -hmm. I went, and I signed up, and I did all this stuff, and then he wound up killing the guy who killed her father. Yeah, like that's that that's that's a dying breed. Right. He probably shouldn't have told us. He probably shouldn't have told anybody because all the code and all that shit. I don't right. care. I really don't fucking care. But sitting care. down, yeah, that's not your better. code. But I didn't, that, you didn't that sign that code, right? Like greatest fucking thing right. in the world for her to do to when, sit was, down. When you got to meet him, mm -hmm. yeah. and that was through for me. Barstool and yeah, through, yeah. like, yeah. I'd like to say me. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no but it's up to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, he's I, friends with one of the guys he used to work with. Yeah. and um, Was that, like, a sense of closure? Does that even... Oh, God, definitely. And yeah, I don't know why. Awesome. Like, it shouldn't have... Like, well, it, I know it, why. It, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's... But it's like he pulled the trigger. Him. I no, did. I know, I, but... I Chris Birch was the guy from Robinson... From Robbie Hunt, no, from Canaccord mm -hmm. Genuity, Chris Birch, Birchie, and he had known Rob because Rob was starting to do some um, public speaking. He lost his brother-in-law. Chris lost his brother-in-law, yeah. and they were doing. He had done fundraisers, and Rob had come, and they became friends through that. Yeah, and they'd hire Rob to come and speak at like a training convention. I used to mm -hmm. do them, right? Yeah, and then yeah. so he, he 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 was like, you know, do you want to meet him? I was like, can I get my wife in front of him? And that, that was that was like a he big sat thing. down and he gave me like undivided attention yeah. for twenty minutes and then, you know, I think that was Told one of the first times I got emotional about, about it. what happened that day. Mm -hmm. Like you know, gave her a little peek, you know, that other Americans other didn't get know. to see. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. she deserves more so than anybody else, and mm -hmm. not more so than anybody else, but more than most people. Right. So like that's another thing, you know. I don't think we're gonna feel that patriotic. No. No. With with or it seems like forward. it would take a fucking act right. of God to turn this thing around, you know? Like, yeah. it doesn't seem like but what, uh, feasible. I don't, wanna, but. I don't wanna forget this, because like when that guy, yeah. when I spoke to him, and he gave me those point, those, yeah. he was new, that guy. And the guy that, as he was talking, 
the guy next to him like caught on. And he ended up being, the guy next to him was this guy, Charles something, I can't think of his name, but he was the chief medical examiner that you saw on TV. Mm -hmm. And when he realized what was happening, he could tell from the conversation that he was talking to somebody, like that, that this guy was talking to someone who wasn't, like, and I wasn't considered next of kin because my dad had a wife. Ugh. Even though I was, yeah. exactly. Ugh, yeah. It was like the things that she did were just awful. Mm -hmm. And, um, but this guy, Chuck, with everything that he had happening as chief medical examiner within less than a year of 9-11, he's dealing with, my God knows how many different, just his life must have been completely turned upside down. He had the wherewithal to say, you know, take the phone away from the guy, introduce himself. And explain and a little ex more, tact was, and a little more. 100%. Yeah, yeah. He came into me, he's like, you know, he got my name and he was like, listen, we have to talk, is there a way I can speak to you in person? He's like, you should never be getting information like this. It was somebody that, it was just a, like, again, like a, sure. just an And to them it kind of becomes work and they're just like, right. maybe I said, get the information I don't need out. That. Yeah. I said, yeah, I don't need any of that. The bedside manner is lacking a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I told him, I said, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get an attorney. I'm not getting litigious. I don't want anything. Mm -hmm, I just, mm -hmm. it just makes me feel better knowing like then now that I know what I'm dealing with on both levels right. like that now I have to deal with this I have to obviously find a way to you know come claim them and, and get them back and then deal with that, like that I'll deal with it another time but it was just that that it was like I needed an adult mm -hmm. I didn't have any adults all the adults around me were, were gone were I was the adult, adult. Yeah. and John Mulhern who really wasn't much of an adult <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, but he was a, no. he was wonderful. But I really I was I needed a parent, like I needed an adult, and I couldn't find one. Well, you know, it's so sad. It's like you needed a dad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's yeah. that's the thing. Like no matter what your situation is, no matter how bad you think it is, having one is better than not. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it was um, it was definitely something I wouldn't wish on anybody. No, ever. No, I mean, and it's crazy how many people had to go through it, but. You know, it's like everybody, you don't want to compare, like, yeah. But boy, you guys got hit hard, you know? It was, it was and, a and lot yeah, for people, your, and we know from, that from people, work to family yeah. to friends to, you know, all of it is. People got hit a lot harder than us, and we know that. And, but I think from a perspective 20 years later, to tell the story again and have people like interested and reach out to us and say, hey, you know what? We kind of forgot about it. Yeah. I remember the first year was like three years ago when it didn't make the front page of the Post of the Daily News. Yeah, that hashtag never forget. No, yeah, that doesn't always stick. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that it's, you know, so doing the blog or doing this or replaying Twisted or doing something every year for as long as I'm here, mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a cool uh, little thing to do. There was there's, there's kind of like a wave the last few years of like, and it seems to come from people who are not old enough to have experienced it at mm -hmm. all or remember it, where it's like you can't even invoke the, the, the numbers, say the date, say the event, yeah. you know, how dare you like bring up or compare or whatever, yeah. and it's like, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't agree with that. Really, like it's. It's like. I mean, of course, if you're doing it in a horrible, disrespectful way or whatever. But to me, it's like it's something that you know. You can say never forget all you want, but part of that is is remembering it and living yeah. it or explaining it or passing it down or whatever. And the more you kind of like, you know, we don't speak of that. It I was kind supposed of fades. to cover it, the Canelo fight. Canelo was originally supposed to fight Caleb Plant on 9/11, and oh, wow. so I would have had to have gone to originally to Vegas, then it moved to Miami. Then the deal didn't get done, so it got pushed to November, right? So, but for a while there, it was like, and that's, like we speak about it, the zone stuff and the boxing stuff, that radio is a big yeah, part of me now. Definitely, yeah. So I, I, I was going to go. Like, you know what I mean? And, right. and but I think I would have, I think I'm at a point she, where I'm fine. Now. She like, said that think. she was, but I mean, yeah, no, you know, I mean, and now, been... you know, I don't have to go, and that's good. You know, but like you know, Evander Holyfield's fighting Vito Bell. Like, there's all this stuff now sure. happening on 9/11. That day used to be. I know it's falling on a Saturday, so it's a little, a little bit different. different. But yeah, it used to be reserved for yeah. you know just that. Like we know a couple of friends whose birthdays are on 9/11 who my don't mom's celebrate. Birthday, yeah. Don't celebrate it and stuff yeah. like that because I don't want it to become a holiday. Yeah, it's, I don't. It's because it's it. it'll just be a sale day. Like I don't. I don't. Oh uh, yeah, you get you a free know, TV or something. It's, yeah. It'll never be yeah. nothing. And and I think for people who experience it like my kids the weird thing is though is like my kids will ask me questions about it and like for the boys i can how old's your year oldest like what year he's was he 17. 17 i got so 17 14 four, four yeah. mm -hmm. but 17 like, 14 and then an 11 year old 11. girl right. but they'll ask me how did he die so i'll tell them like what happened no no but how did he die uh, and i'm like like literally like him, i can't i can't say heart attack i can't suffocate. say like i don't yeah. know what to say like i'm like 
you know. No, well, that's it's the un, a, it's the weird unknown it's, part that kind yeah. of haunts you a little bit. Where it's and they don't like let you said, it go. The, you know, Tommy or whoever was on that mm-hmm. floor. You you have your answer in a way, as yeah. gruesome right. as it is. Like, but what was there anything for you? We'll wrap up kind of on this note. Um, it was, you know, for me and for for people who are watching on the outside, it's like we remember George Bush throwing out the first pitch and throwing a strike mm-hmm. and uh, certain moments that, you know, were rallying or whatever. Was there anything, did any of that stuff like hit home for you guys as people going through it or was that all just, you know, surface level bullshit that's like great, you know? Well, like the did patriotic you, stuff after? Yeah, or patriotic, or what was there cer- something that gave you hope or put a smile on your face or made you think it was going to be okay or did any of that stuff work for you the same way that it probably worked for me or anybody who didn't lose anyone directly? Seeing Mick read the names that year was pretty cool. Yeah. Seeing yeah. my son get up there and, by the way, he was the youngest kid to read the names up until that point when he did it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they gave him some <laughs> I mean, they though. gave that was cool. some, some thirteen letter Pima Pitalon, and yeah. I was like, yeah, some God, God, yeah. so, "Where's a Joe I mean, Smith?" He, he was fifteen of them, so I mean, we were, I mean, I'm yelling yeah. at him, and, and you know that there's some family yeah. wanting for their moment. Yeah. And you he was totally, ten, and he went in, oh, he man, went in there, tough. and he had yeah. like some of these like legit three namers, and uh, it yeah. was, and like everybody else <laughs> at the end, <laughs> this is a little shit on. They'd be like. Uh, Joe Smith and and Kevin Williams and stuff, and then finally my husband Tommy, uh, you know Smith. Tommy, listen, nobody makes waffles like you. I miss you every day. Oh, the Mets are gonna do it this. Da, 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 like everyone would like do that stuff, and then I think my son went through and was like boom, boom, boom. And then my grandfather, Wall, Wall Street's, Street's last gentleman, gentleman you know Emmer oh. Carvey. And my grandfather, Wall Street's gentleman, Emmer Carvey. And that was, that was, and he's like a handsome kid. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Crushed and, and he crushed it. And like, so, like, I I'm, I live my whole life saying that everything's overrated. And it really is. The Grand Canyon's sure. not breathtaking. Fuck it's you. a hole in the ground. Yeah, yeah. But little, <laughs> little bullshitty things like that. And then little acts of kindness that we've had. When she did the thing at St. Patrick's, it was extraordinary. Mm-hmm. When we get feedback from what we've recently done here at Barstool, it's extraordinary. It's not enough to fill the gap and it's not enough to make us not sad, inf- infinitely sad that he didn't get to see his grandkids. Mm. But there are pockets of extraordinary mm, definitely. throughout, you know, mm. and- My middle you know, guy looks exactly like him. So yeah, after a while you're like, oh, freaky. God. Yeah, Turn so, around. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> there There have been, so, even though like maybe like the Rob O'Neill thing was one of them. And definitely. Like, mm-hmm. There have been mm-hmm. peaks. Right, uh, you know, from from. But right from after, it was too exhausting. Right, yeah, like I sure. would fall. He he would. So he took. Like it was like Andre Bocelli singing. Who gives a fuck? That's what I mean. Some of these <laughs> cursory yeah. things that. Yeah, like, I mean, like you know shit. the people watching at home, you know, in the, yeah. the, in the Midwest yeah. are like America, yeah. and you yeah. guys are like I don't well, come to my care. town. Yeah. We got an I beam, and we're putting uh, it up in the town yeah, square, that kind and of shit. you know, come and yeah. dedicate yeah. that. My, my uh, good for you. Kind of, you know, an uncle, if you will, is a firefighter, and he always tells a story of he was like out to to lunch or something, and this guy was just staring at him as he eats and he was like like what what is it man like what is it and he's like I just just wanted to look at a real hero you know and he was like Aww. it's nice but it was like you're just staring at me and making yeah. it a thing Say that it you know he, he, he was hand. like I'm gonna stare at him and make it a thing you know right. and it's all, yeah, it's all rooted in good uh, faith and but right. it's like ah you know enough yeah you know? the street was great the street naming yeah, like, was cool the street naming was yeah. really cool they the thing was is that when down there at that time like so many celebrities wanted to come down to the trading floor. Right. So they were constantly bringing celebrities by. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It was cool and it was, it was but I was like, like trying, like I felt bad because I was trying to, like I was trying to work. Work, yeah. And I mean, I like got a lot the more, of them were coming difficult. through and like I couldn't appreciate it. Dick was very it. good to you. So like if Grasso yeah. had somebody come down, like he'd be like, excuse me, Annie, do you have a second? And she'd turn around and she'd be, he'd be like, this is Muhammad Ali. Excuse me, Andy, you have a second? This is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, so I have like all these pictures and I don't remember <laughs> yeah. any of them. She's like, good man, you know I gotta get my, you know. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like, this is Paulie Shore. Yeah, you know, like, like, these are monster names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These are icons. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have the patience or the time when I met Dion the first time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, I'm hoping yeah, yeah, yeah. to like, you know, be Hi, like. Prime, keep moving. Yeah, yeah, like I had no, like it was just. Well, I mean, again, you know. that's all rooted in like love and people who want to try to help in a situation that is, ultimately helpless you know there's there's yeah. no i want to 
give you an answer for something that can't be answered. I want to put a smile on your face for a time you don't want to smile. And like, it's, it's all, you know, intent, good intentions, but sometimes there's nothing that can be done, you know? And it's, it's all just about like how you guys handle it as a family and as people. But I mean, the fact that you now can do it the way you, you do it and do it on Twisted History, write it on the blog, thank you for doing this. Like it's, I think it helps other people who, and even if you don't, you know, you didn't go, you don't lose your family in something like a terrorist attack, but there are similarities in the way people grieve or handle it. And like the way you went back to work is so inspirational and, you know, all of it's, it's very impressive to, uh, to see how people like rise to the occasion. And I'm sure it's something you would have been proud of. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you letting us coming on to talk about it. Cause yeah. I think it does help. Good. Well, and I wouldn't do I would it if that. I wasn't yeah, asked. I, I, you know, I didn't want to. Yeah. Again, 15 years ago, yeah. You know, wouldn't, right, it right, wouldn't right. happen. This is this is you know this is the. <laughs> it takes a while, yeah. but it's it's gotten it's getting better. Wow. You know, so that's that's good, and it's not for clicks, right? We've no, made, no, you know, no, like no. this type of shit is not no. for clicks. This type of stuff is cathartic for us as much right. as hopefully it's is entertaining the right word, interesting for other people. Yeah, this is, you know, yeah, what I mean? there's something captivating about yeah. it and intriguing, and you hope to learn from it or mm -hmm. get gain some perspective. Or like I said, I mean, uh, if there's one thing that could come from this, aside from maybe you guys getting some things out and whatever, like any, uh, any type of uh, cohesion or, or coming together or not fucking, maybe if, if one person watches this and doesn't argue with somebody on the internet about politics today, I would be happy about right, that, right, you know? Yeah. Like where it get, it's, you know, it, get, it can be so much worse. Yeah, I haven't and seen that pad in over 20 years. Yeah. That's worth it, right? You know, like, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, Jesus yeah, Christ. A bunch of stuff. I appreciate you saying he'd be proud of me because that means really, more to I me mean, than anything. Even in the brief understanding of what kind of guy I know he is, like the fact that you kept everything going and did it for widows and kept, in, you know, Cobra going and didn't miss a beat you know, it's kind of cliche to be like, that's how we would have wanted it. But mm -hmm. in the little that I understand of him, I'm sure that's, he would have wanted it. So good on you, Annie. Thank you. I love I you and I appreciate it. you doing it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thanks, guys. This is, uh, this is like. It's something else, right? Museum yeah. worthy, you know? It's crazy, right? So I have on like, um, it used to be much shit? bigger. I don't know. Because they gave it to me. I don't know. Go through it. Have, have fun. That's like the St. Pat's thing. That's the Fox News thing. What's this? His? When So when they opened the floor on um, September 17, 2001, because we had the training floor was closed, that is, um, that's the hats they gave out when they, op when they rang oh, when the they bell. when they reopened it? When they rang the opening bell on September 17th. Man, they really got back to it pretty quick, huh? We had no choice. I mean, I guess money, money doesn't stop, huh? So Definitely does not. That's Rick's mask guard she from when he died. Too. I hate that's that. Mike Pascumas. <laughs> that's Bobby Sutcliffe's. That's Junior's. That's Mike Tamuccio's. Lars, let me tell you, dude, it was so crazy. You that's rattled Bobby off. That's Bobby Toomey. When you started rattling Jesus everybody Christ. off, you did it in the exact order she had it written down in the oh, okay. really? I'm not kidding you. It was. Oh, so these. that's the swing and sway with Rick and Ray. That's my <laughs> father-in-law. That's Ray <laughs> Strain, the head of New Burger Berman's desk. Holy shit. That's that, you know when they used to pull up in yes. those rides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the gypsy like rides is called? Yeah. Swing and sway with Rick, Rick and you can't see it. Right, yeah. that's what he did, other than being a $2 broker on the floor. Imagine that. <laughs> right? Is that crazy? Did, this was the page, man. As soon as you mentioned uh, Robert yeah. Tommy, and then at the very end, these two yeah, were reversed. But I mean, much. you went... L.P. Dickinson, yeah. Thomas Sullivan, Robert Sutcliffe. It was one after the other after the other in the exact I thought order. I had it in here. It might be at the bottom. The Wall Street Journal took out like a big, like two-page ad for my dad. It was pretty cool. Yeah, they did. They just to, to like talk about him as, as like a just, Wall Street they guy. Gave who, like a, they gave like, what was this? Was this the Times? They gave like a little synopsis of him in, uh, what is that? Is that the Times? This might be the New York Times. But um, this is no, whole... they just put, um, it was like when you opened like the center, the centerfold of the Wall Street here, Journal, here, it just said his name with the, you know, his newspaper here. His um, oh, oh, date times. of birth, 9/11, and that was it. They didn't, they didn't write anything. They just, you know, a little. This is Wall Street Journal. It's all. There might be that one. This is from October 11th. I don't know if that would have been it, but these are in great shape, to be honest. For we didn't have I, I haven't, It hasn't been you touched really since. At it? Yeah. yeah. 2001. Wow. <laughs> the middle's gonna deteriorate. Oh, that's when I became a broker. Oh, no, that was with Giuliani, maybe. I don't know. Oh, just with Giuliani. <laughs> you know, me and Rude. Yeah. Oh, my God. He knew me by name, which was nice. He probably doesn't anymore, but 
I mean, I had a, he was, um, you know, I guess was he, I guess he oversaw the SEC at the time. And then we got audited right after. Oh, fuck. Like the, I <laughs> mean, come on. Like, really, you know America? How, like, you know how, like, you get chosen, like, it's like a random, like, picked out a hat, out of a hat? Yeah. Ours was picked out of a hat, like, just totally by chance. Oh, and now they yeah. couldn't put your name back in, so you had no choice. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it's I in there somewhere. I haven't read this rag in years. I don't think anybody has. It's in there somewhere. My mom might have it. It was wild. This is like a little, uh... Time. This were, this is unbelievable too. Just isn't this that wild? Bible that, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what do we get? And here? then I I Ages. when I went and I got to a place where I can make a phone call, I looked down and I saw a, a messenger bag with a laptop in it. Not everyone had laptops oh, back then. Remember that guy? He was a jerk. He so I took happy. it back to my mom's house and I reached out and I found the guy uh -huh. and then I drove to him. He lived in downtown Brooklyn. I gave him his thing. And he was like, thanks and closed the door. Yeah, he wasn't even like, nice. I, I wasn't looking for like whatever, but this was an emotional time for all of us. Yeah, maybe we a just went a... through this together. Yeah. Yeah. He was where I was Don't and he just it. ran away. I'm sorry. He ran away quicker than I did. Yeah. yeah his fucking thing. I should have kept his name. I don't remember why I took that one. Put him on blast. This, this was just somebody's? Like this, yeah. this receipt, when I was, you, you when I was leaving, is, right? like, yeah, I don't know. When I was leaving, I saw a Bible, that. and I'm like, I can't leave a holy Bible on the ground. That's bad luck. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. I just felt like it we was bad the, luck. We need all the luck we can get here, right. all of the good vibes. So these were, it's funny, these were, when you went to, um, when you went to anything, like the kids, like all around the, the country were sending stuff. Mm -hmm. So someone at the Red Cross had given me this, like a little thing, and the note. I probably should find this girl, right? Like I just kept it inside a Ziploc. Her name is Jessica Beadle. Jessica Beadle. She lived in Moore, Oklahoma. And, and wait, what was this? They, like, they, like, when oh, you would, she wrote this yeah, to like, you guys? Yeah, when you like, go to the... Hi, um, my name is Jessica Beadle. I live in... Moore, Oklahoma. Moore, Oklahoma. My family and I have prayed for everybody. And like when you went in like to the armory and stuff, they gave you something like this with a note from somebody from sweet, family. just like from a yeah. family. And you were not allowed to leave unless you pet the service dog. And like just so that like like yeah, they were so through, yeah. in touch with how they needed people to feel and to believe and you know and now it'd be like you know we have prayed for everybody we'll don't email. get the vaccine because we think it's this yeah. and that and uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly oh, that's just crazy. so she's probably like she's probably what seven there so she's probably almost thirty yeah, now, yeah, twenty just, now I mean I'm just, sure the way the way uh, we could fi probably find this girl like you know. In a couple minutes. One? The okay. Memorial Project. So the tapes are, this was the Fox News thing they did on him. This was when we opened the opening bell, 2003. This was my dad's memorial service at St. Patrick's Cathedral. We had like almost 5,000 people there. It was wild. And this was the opening bell, November 26th. I don't know why that stands out. I don't know why they gave that to me. <laughs> what was May 26th, though, too? Is that... I have no idea. Me too. I don't know. I don't remember why I saved specific ones. The towers died. This used to be the size of a coffin. Like she right. saved everything from it, and then um, she kind of trimmed it down to this box. I don't even and know then, why. Uh, I kept some that I kept. So this was. I mean, everything. Because like the there was such. Yeah, a, I don't know what's in that there one. There must be something in there that hats and happened that bullshit, day, or maybe there, there might have just mean? been something in the um, one of my stocks. I meant both. Yeah, I must have been. I'm, my guess is that I was looking at it with a magnifying glass to see if I could see somebody mm. standing out the window. I will tell you right now. Going back to 390 Greenwich afterwards, while the thing was still burning. Like the stink, oh the God, smell. It was so gross. And like, my dad was down there. My dad's got asbestosis from it. Like he's one of those guys. He was. I mean, he was down I was, there. I every never day had afterwards. asthma until, until after I was yeah. diagnosed with. I asthma. mean, that's the stuff that you don't. The the toll that you yeah. don't think about. It's like far, far after that morning is still having any yeah. effect. These were cool when they when they rang the opening bells and stuff. They gave us like all kinds of these things. Like yeah. every year, like people like. Like the um, cool train floor, they love those. Like they love to give out just like another one in there yeah. from Tiffany's. Like they love to give out yeah, that little, stuff. Uh, yep. Right. There's. A, is, I don't know if the Tiffany one is though. Is, is that the same thing? This I'm is upset the we didn't get to do it down the to the New York Stock Exchange, but still. What year? What year is this? This is. Oh, this was the first anniversary. So this was the first anniversary. That's what they gave out the first one. Oh wow, that's really nice. That like one. Like they. Like I don't think places do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Where they go out and give you like, you know. Right? Yeah. No, it was, it's always been the best. Do you guys, do you do anything on the 11th? Like, 
Nah, we used to lay, we used to like lay low, low, yeah, like yeah, day yeah, drink and out. not get out of bed and yeah. stuff like that. And with kids, it's hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like on a, you know, like a, why, why that no, drunk like, at two no, p.m.? Yeah. But when they were going to school, it wasn't that bad. Like we would just mm. get oh, up school that day, yeah. and function. Yeah, Everyone had cereal, and we'd get them to school, and then come mm-hmm. home and just kind of turn off the fucking TVs. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then just kind of lay low. I like to be at work on that day, like if I could be, because everybody that was with me would like we would have our moment of silence, and then the after you stop working, this was yeah, like then the ab- bell would ring, you go back yeah. to it, and you'd be like, mm-hmm. all right, it's just a regular day, yeah, yeah, God, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. But that's what we do and suppress it all down until we explode. So that's yeah. it. Yeah. Goodness that's it. gracious. But yeah, we didn't speak about it until you wrote that blog. Yep. Because it was like every day. What, is, what, what, are we, what am I going to say to him? Like, but, but, you know. And we share everything. We share, yeah. and so the, maybe that sounds a little bit deceptive. Like when we went to the um, person, when we went to, for the psychosomatic pain, we went to a counselor. Yeah. And we sat down. They were like, t- t- she was like, tell us everything. So we just told her everything. And she was like, I think you guys are uh, beyond me. I can't do anything for you. Just like, you she like said, you I want you to tell her prescriptions about. for meds like, if you want. She's like, painkillers and stuff, but mm-hmm. she seems like you guys know exactly what's going on. You just got to pro- like go work through it, right? Like, yeah. We yeah. knew yeah. what was going on. She right. knew what she was doing wrong. I knew, you know, what I was doing wrong. I knew, you know, but we just, it was just impossible to tackle. Mm-hmm. So we were a little bit of an avoidance type thing. I don't know. It, it, you know, we, well, I think we're strong. I mean, however for it. you did handle it, like yeah. you know, your family's great. You guys yeah. are stronger for it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're, a, you. you're an asshole, but other than absolutely, one hundred percent. Everyone else is one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is good looking yeah. and, and nice, and yes. then there's large dad just weighing down. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you gonna do, right? Like, you had no time. choice but to really just move on. Ninety-five. Well, was unstoppable. No, you, you <laughs> what'd you say? Ninety-three to ninety-five, though. <laughs> we had a good run. Our wedding was fun. We ran out of beer at our wedding. Yeah. <laughs>